The rivalry began on October 24th, 1884. The two teams have met 154 times. Lehigh will try to win their fifth straight in the series. Lafayette wants to stop that streak and keep their playoff hopes alive. It is college football's most played rivalry. Lafayette, Lehigh, on the Lafayette Sports Network. Next. Stadium in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the Lafayette Sports Network in cooperation with RCN Television and the Patriot League Network presents Lafayette College Football. It's the 155th playing of college football's most played rivalry where Lafayette and Lehigh meet in a game that started back in 1884. Hello, everybody. I'm John Leone alongside Phil Ng. Uh, as usual, Gary Laubach, Mike Joseph, along with the call of the game. As a matter of fact, let's go to those guys right now. In this ball game, there are just so many things you can look at. You can look at the history, you can look at the stats, you can look at the series records. But to me, this game is pretty simple to analyze. I think Mike's going to have an easy job today. Neither one of these offenses have played great football most of the season. And last week, there were only two field goals between the two football teams. So, Mike, in this ball game, with two quarterbacks that have never played in this game, it really all comes down to which offense plays better football. Yeah, these offenses have to stay on the field. It's, that's the number one thing. And I think by doing that, you got to run the football. It's which offensive line is going to create some space. And then for Lafayette, when they play well, they get splash plays. They get those 20 plus yard games uh, gains and when they do that that's when their offense clicks picking up yardage on first down staying on schedule it's all about the offenses today I agree it's all about the offenses back to John thanks Gary thank you Michael we look forward to your call when we come back Phil and I will talk more about the keys to today's game I think you can see on your screen how beautiful a day this is. 41 degrees and it feels 41. Not much of a wind chill factor. Five miles an hour, low humidity. It is a perfect day for Lafayette Lehigh. Let's take a look at our impact players today. We talked about playing in his first Lafayette Lehigh game for quarterback Keegan Shoemaker of Lafayette and Mike on the other side. You've got to go with some defense and Keith Wetzel has been their star on the Lehigh side. Yeah, we'll start on the Lehigh side. Keith Wetzel's been terrific. Look at that, 107 tackles he leads. Uh, the F FCS in solo tackles per game. Nine and a half sacks is impressive to me from the linebacker position. And obviously Keegan Shoemaker is the juggernaut that makes the Lafayette offense go. Our officials for today's game, Jeff Gray is the referee. Keith Vaberchek is the umpire. Headlinesman Tim Kenny. Lorenzo Evans is the line judge. Milton Hagen's the field judge. Bob Hurtigan is the side judge. Sean O'Callaghan is the back judge. Here you get a look at the two head coaches. Tom Gilmore in his first Lafayette Lehigh game as a head coach. He was here as an assistant. And for John Garrett, this is Lafayette Lehigh number three. Yet to beat Lehigh is 0 and 2. Uh, Lehigh has won 17 of the last 25, four in a row. And last year, the start was a nightmare. Lafayette was down 17 nothing with less than nine minutes passed in that first quarter. Here we go, Lafayette Lehigh 155. Glad you are with us as the ball comes down to Selwyn Simpson. And he's not going to get back to the 25 yard line as he gets nailed by Jack Pilson out of Mattoon, Illinois. So Lafayette will start. First and 10, they'll have the ball on the 18-yard line. Keegan Shoemaker comes in, having set a freshman record, 2,416 yards passing. Yeah, Keegan's been terrific. The freshman of the week, and uh, obviously back in September, he was the Patriot League Rookie of the Week four times this year and the Offensive Player of the Week three times. And, uh, you know, again, the offense goes as he goes. We'll see how he gets a good start here. Ball on the 17-yard line for Lafayette to start their first drive. They give it to Selwyn Simpson, and he is going to get hit in the backfield. He manages to get to about the 15-yard line. Tackle is made on the play by Keith Wetzel. So there's Wetzel immediately. He's had six games of double-digit tackles. There'll be a loss of a couple of yards on the play. Uh, you can see what Lehigh wants to do. They brought the blitz. Jalen Floyd, the weak corner blitz, into the tight end wing formation on the back side. And they just clouded things up. There wasn't much of a hole there for Selwyn to get moving. Lafayette loses a few yards of TFL to start the game. And a first passing situation for Shoemaker. 
Shoemaker has completed 60% of his throws, gets a quick out here, and that is to Selwyn Simpson. He was knocked out of bounds by Eric Slater as he'll pick up yardage to the 19, and that's just a gain of four. Well, Lehigh brings the blitz again right up the middle. Well, middle. Wetzel coming with the backside free safety as well. So uh, Tegan Leach there coming. So they brought their first two plays. Lehigh is trying to set you back into long yardage, and they've done so here on this first drive. Third and long for, left, for the Leopards. So it brings up third and about eight yards to go for a first down. Another passing situation for Shoemaker. Lafayette doesn't want to go one, two, three, and out. And here comes the blitz again. And coming in is Keith Wetzel. For Wetzel, he gets the sack. That's his 10.5 10 sack this season. And another tackle for a loss for him, 13 and a half. Yeah, and some uh, miss, uh, miss assignment up front for Lafayette. Watch him. He's just going to come straight up the middle as Burke goes right. And uh, Grunhofer takes the nose guard left. Get the free safety or excuse me, the uh, middle linebacker right up the middle. You got no backs in the backfield, no nobody to cover. That ball's got to come out quick and got to come out hot, and it did it. Back is Jalen Floyd to return the kick. Lafayette has had problems punting the football for any kind of distance. Gordon Brock just 31 yards per punt. This one is going to bounce, and it will take a little bit of a Lafayette bounce. Looks like it might make, it might get the midfield. It did not quite get there before the ball was down by Ed Rogowski. And they'll put it at the Lafayette 49-yard line, a 39-yard punt. Yeah, just good enough to get it out of there. But you go back to that series to start off. Lafayette, two passes. Their first run set them back. And then, obviously, no back situation. Uh, Lehigh bringing the blitz on three consecutive downs. So you got a feeling for what they're looking to do defensively is to stop this offensive Lafayette through blitzing. Alec Beesmer is the sophomore quarterback Rashawn Allen is his running back and Allen has the football he cuts up inside runs right into a leopard they're going to give him a generous spot and a gain of one as he is tackled on the play by Malik Ham as it'll bring up a second and nine Rashawn comes into the ball game 2.8 yards per carry Beesmer 16 for 44 for 191 yards and a touchdown that's just 36 percent completion yeah he's going to need to be better than that today so again both these defenses causing second and long and that's what you want to do here here comes Rashawn again Allen he's trying to get to the outside he does not quite get there he stepped out of a Yazir Thomas tackle not sure how that wasn't a hold there. Malik Ham was upfield and getting held from behind. Boy, there's a missed call there by the officials. That uh, Malik Ham had a TFL in the backfield. Take another look at it. You get a look at Alex Beesmer there. Two games, like Gary said, not a very high completion percentage. From the 45 yard line, it brings up a third and six as they have to get to the 39. So a big play here for the Lafayette defense. Lafayette trying to get lined up properly versus this bunch set at the top. Look for screen at the top, a quick screen, and maybe a punt to go. He's his first pass of the ball game. He's in trouble, and he's going to go down. So a sack by Lafayette. So as we mentioned, Mike, in the pregame, it's all about the defense as the offenses have to play better football to win this game. Well, you said it, and that was just a four-man rush for Lafayette coming, adding an extra guy. Keith Earl coming off the top of the weak side and Malik Cam coming off the left side. So you see the twist in there by Ryan Barnett. They don't pick it up offensively. And uh, Beesmer does a good job just to not lose a lot of yardage on that play. Should have been sacked for probably a six or seven yard loss. And they're going to try to punt Lafayette in deep. Austin Henning is the punter. He averages 35 and a half yards per punt. The ball is collected by Webb, Chris Webb. And the ball will be placed at the 18 yard line. That is a 28 yard punt. Yeah, if Lehigh continues defensively to put the pressure on and blitz, then one of these receivers for Lafayette. You, know, you look for some of the young guys here to make a play. Maybe Julius Young on the outside. We haven't yet seen um, uh, Zadok Scott in the game for Lafayette, but this bunch formation, maybe look for some play action pass here. As Lehigh again, looking at the top of the screen, the blitz is coming from the top. There it is. Simpson will get the, the handoff and now looking for something. And he just simply uh, stopped there and then the pursuit was able to put him down. Tackle is made by Michael Lawrencell, who came in with 17 tackles and a tackle for a loss. He is a sophomore. 
And the ball at the 17 is a loss of a yard. First down is so important for both these teams. So two carries so far for Selwyn Simpson, minus three yards. Uh, you got to pick up more on first down, and these teams are going to have to maybe throw some play action on first down to create some second and shorts. Up the end of the minus 12 on the ground after the sack. Back to throw, stepping up. Shoemaker's going deep. He's got a man just beyond the outstretched hands as that was intended for Julius Young, and Julius Young had gotten a little bit of space and the pass just a hair too long. Well, you said it, Gary. He had space and he had the inside leverage right here. See Keegan step up and let that one fly. It just got away from him a little bit, and he actually led him back into the defender. That ball's got to be a little bit further out in front of Young, and I think he runs for a touchdown there. Good position by him. I like that more on a first down play than on second and long, because now you're facing again. you got to keep your eyes on Wetzel right in the middle of the formation. I would expect Lee had to bring again some pressure here. Zadok Scott finally in the game. Here he is not showing pressure, but we get a whistle. And this is going to be against the Leopards, a five yard penalty. Five yards for procedure. Sets the ball back to the 12 yard line. And I think Lee Lafayette's got to look to do something. Anytime they've been effective versus Lehigh, it's been between the numbers, inside between the hash marks. You've got to get your tight ends involved. And Lafayette right here just looking to get the ball out of the shadow of their own end zone, you know, punting the ball back and forth here. The way Lafayette has punted, and even Lehigh, you're playing field position here in the first quarter. Third and 16. Back to throw, firing. It's caught, it's a first down. As that will get up to the 29-yard line. Catching the football for Lafayette is Jordan Hull, his seventh catch of the year. That was a nice bullet throw by Shoemaker, a gain of 17 yards. Yeah, well, Lehigh brought a three-man rush right there, and it wasn't, uh, wasn't very effective, and that gave Shoemaker the time to kind of step up and climb in the pocket. Let's take it together, look at it here again. The three-man rush doesn't really get there. So they, uh, we can get another look at it there. But again, Lafayette first down, throwing the football, great second down and four to six, staying on schedule. Caught by uh, Stelianos. Stelianos gets it up to the 33-yard line, brings up a second and six on the four-yard pickup. Lafayette goes with that trips formation to the top. That was the 21st Stelianos catch of the year. Now for 177 yards. And the ball off. Simpson, this time he gets the edge, cuts back against the edge, and does a nice run into Lehigh territory. As the game will be up to the Lehigh 46 yard line. Tackled on the play by Sam McCloskey, their free safety. Also, Marquise Wilson is in there, and the officials will mark it at the 46, a gain of 21. Yeah, really nice job on the edge by Stilianos and Burke just to get out in front. And then a lot of patience by Selwyn Simpson as he gets caught again behind the line of scrimmage here. So Lehigh trying to stop the running game of Lafayette on first down with a lot of blitzing, and they've done it a couple times, even though Lafayette now has changed some field position. Jason Dooling was in on that tackle, loss of a yard. So it will bring up a second and 11. The ball back at the 47-yard line. 8.45 to go in the first quarter. One thing Lafayette's got to take a look at is the backside corner versus a tight end or tight end wing only. A lot of blitzing coming off that backside. And off as Lafayette will get maybe a yard or two. John Gay, I think, in there. It was uh, Gay that carries the football. Gay with 12, 217 yards, 3.6 yards per carry. Gain of just a yard. We obviously are keeping our eye on the Holy Cross Georgetown game. That has Patriot League championship implications. Uh, the last time we checked, they started at noon. No score. Both teams have threatened a little bit. But Holy Cross uh, missed a field goal. And it stays one, no score now at the end of one. There's a blitz again. Here comes the free safety and Picked Wetzel. Up. That's a good catch. That ball is caught by Jordan Hall. And Hall will get grabbed at the 41, a gain of five. They're going to be stopped shot of a first down. Davis Maxey 
is there to make the tackle. Maxie's the guy that, after the strip last year, picked the ball up, went in for a touchdown in the first, what, 16 seconds? Yeah, absolutely. Put Lafayette down quickly here. And this is just a ball that's going to go a little bit short of the first down marker. You see Hull trying to break a tackle. Good tackle there at the point of attack, not allowing Hull to break free. It's a very good job by the Lehigh defender on that side and John Sigmund to make a play. Now Lafayette can change some field position here, maybe pin Lehigh in deep, another struggling offense. Yeah, that's the difference with that drive. It gave Lafayette a chance to turn it over, but the ball is kicked into the end zone. So a 41 yard kick, but it ends up just netting 21 yards. We're gonna call our first time out of the ball game. 155 is 0-0. They'll come out defensively here. A little bit, obviously, field position change there. And, you know, the one time you want Cord Brock to kind of kick it short, he, he launched it into the end zone. He's trying to look to see if he could pin them inside the 15 or the 10 yard line. But that one he actually turned over, landed about five or six yards deep in the end zone. But Lafayette has changed field position. Zathan Hill is at running back, 5'11 freshman, 7.4 yards per carry. He's been their leading rusher. Good protection this time. Fire, that's intercepted. That ball is going to be caught by Lafayette. It was thrown short, and Yazir Thomas comes up with the interception for Yazir, his first interception of the season. The Lafayette captain with a big play. Well, they were looking for Austin Dombach, the number 15, the tall wide receiver, sophomore, 6'3", 195, and he had a step or two, but like you said, Gary, Beesmer just threw that ball way short, and at first, I almost thought that, uh, that uh, the defender there, YT, stopped a little bit early, but he had a beat on that football, and he went up and took it at its highest point. I kind of had a feeling like YT was ready to play today, the senior. From the highest point, we saw that interception coming very early. In the backfield for Lafayette is Jaden Sutton. Back to throw, though, is Shoemaker, and that's a good catch. Nice job putting out the big ball that time is Jake Ta Taggart, his 16th catch of the year. Doesn't get a lot of pickup of about three yards. And you see Lafayette again, the first down throwing trying to get the ball out of the hands quick the double tight end formation to the weak side good protection this ball you almost get a feeling like Keegan's a little bit amped up two overthrows that to me was an overthrow that was obviously pulled in by Taggart in the long throw uh, down the middle of the field to Julius Young just has to dial it back a little bit and take what this defense gives him easily said when you're in your first Lafayette Lehigh <laughs> game yeah. and the ball off and looking to go is uh, Jaden Jaden Sutton carries the football he's had 4.1 yards per carry this year, 269 yards total. He'll get it to the 42. He'll pick up five yards before being brought down by Ty G. Leach. Uh, with arrow pointing way up for a guy like Jaden Sutton, just a freshman. He is a big kid, over 200 pounds, and is a really nice changeup to Selwyn Simpson there. Played 11 games this year, ran for 100 yards back against Georgetown, had the 86-yard run, so he is a home run hitter. And Lafayette now faced with these situations, third down and two. Tough call here. It has not been a real successful year on third and one, third and two. And Sutton has, that depends on the spot. And it doesn't look like they're going to give him a good one. He's going to be a half a yard shy of the first down. As it looked like he was going to get it, then he did not get it. It's really only about a half a yard or a football. Here's a great tackle inside. He should get really nice penetration by the Lehigh defender there. Kind of made Sutton stutter step in the backfield. Eric Slater, the junior defensive tackle, defensive end came underneath the block of, Bar of uh, Gavin Barkley, kind of blew that up a little bit in the backfield. Lafayette's going to go for this. I'm looking for quarterback sneak. All you need to do is pick up a full length of the football. Yeah, here. you don't need much at all. They hand it off. That's first down. And so that will be much. a first down. No, not by much. Let's see who carries the ball. I thought he had an eight up there. It was uh, Ryan Montaigne <laughs> who carries the ball for the first time this season. And he gets a very important first down. He needed a yard. He got a yard. Well, they got a good double team. And you saw Wetzel. Wetzel is so active. He came right through the backside A-gap. He knew the play. But give the, the senior Montaigne a lot of credit. You know, I think the last carry Montaigne had was in the spring game when he I went for 60 yards. But great second effort and the strength that Ryan Montaigne has there to pick up that first down. Trying to remember if we've seen him in the backfield before at all. Yeah, maybe uh, as, even a blocker, as a blocker. Yeah. an H back or something. Lafayette had a little trouble getting lined up here. From the 39-yard line, first Blitz. and 10. Here comes the blitz. They'll get it out. With the ball is Sutton, and Sutton is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose a yard. 
run out of bounds by uh, Keith Wetzel. How many Wetzels are there down there? He's all over the field, loss of a yard. Now Lafayette right now just throwing the ball to the outside. The one time they've gone between the numbers, they had a good completion to Hull, and they had a wide open uh, Julius Young down the middle of the field. The, these throws to the boundary, you know, sometimes Coach John Garrett, he wants to make sure that he spreads the field and widens things out, but the pressure, that was a blindside hit that Keegan took as he released the ball. Actually give him a loss of a couple of yards back to the 41. So it brings up a second and a dozen. Got to be able to work the middle of the field. Good protection. And here he, Shoemaker does what he does so well. He's going to slide down. Probably could have gotten the first Slipped. down. As he slips down in front of him was Jalen Floyd just waiting. And instead, he's going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down. So he picks up 10. It's going to bring up a third and two. And a good decision by him. Eyes downfield the entire time. Good pick up there by Grunhofer on the twist. And then you see him just peck, uh, tuck it away, and he loses his footing a little bit down there on the grass. You know, Lafayette has only played two games on grass, this being the second. The first game was against Holy Cross, where they won the game. And you know what? Jo Jeff Kordenbrock, the kicker for Lafayette, has been fantastic on grass. The field is in terrific shape, though. We were down there walking around a little bit. It almost looks like a turf field. Here comes Sutton. Can he cut back up inside? He's got the first down, I think. No. He's going to be a yard and a half shy. First one to come up and hit him is Eric Slater, the outside linebacker. So we can only give him a yard, and it's going to bring up fourth and another yard. Yeah, and that's a play that should have picked up the first down. jaden has got to put his foot in the ground right here. He's trying to take this wide, and then right here, stick your foot in the ground and get back inside. But very good job in pursuit by the uh, Riley O'Neill, number nine. Riley O'Neill has played 45 games, started 45 games for Lehigh. And in his senior year, playing outside linebacker, mostly a safety prior to that. Selwyn Simpson is in the backfield. Comes the blitz. And he'll try to pick up the yard. The cutback, he'll get it. He falls forward. He'll keep the ball in Lafayette's hands. Tackle is made by Marquise Wilson. They will mark the ball at the 28-yard line. That's a pickup of three. Lafayette first down, number four. That's just a great cut. That's all Selwyn Simpson. There was nothing in that front side A gap. And that quick cut, watch him make the quick cut right here. Bang. He makes it prior to that. And a really good job by uh, Litka, the backside uh, a uh, wide receiver was lined up off the tackle, and he ended up taking Eric Slater across the, uh, the formation and across the, the hole. John Gay now in the backfield. Keegan Shoemaker keeps it, fires, has a man open, and that's a good hit. And getting knocked out of bounds after the catch is Jake Litka. Litka will get down to the 14 at yard line, as that will be a pickup of 14 yards. Yeah, nice play right there. You fake the sweep, you come back out, and you run a little bit of a takeoff by Julius Young. You clear it out, and then you get the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the backside. John Gay's now going to bring it here. Gay will not get back to the line of scrimmage as he's tackled on the play by uh, D Davis Maxey again. And the loss is back to the 18-yard line. That's going to be a loss of four. Well, this Lehigh defense runs so well sideline to sideline. All of those plays so far that they've run wide, they go in the back of my playbook right now because they're taking away the perimeter, and any pressure they're bringing is from the perimeter as well. And if you run the ball more downhill, I think they can run the ball right at Wetzel, right at the nose guard of uh, Michael Lawrence Sell. Straight downhill, the wide plays are just not working right now for Lafayette. Second and 14, back to throw, good protection looking to go firing into the corner of the end zone and it's too far out of the end zone intended for Jordan Hall good coverage downfield and not a bad idea to just throw that ball away although it looked like there might have been some running room for Keegan but it's going to bring up third long yeah the loss on first down is forcing Lafayette in to throw the football they try to double move and great coverage on the outside that time by Marquise Wilson didn't bite on it he's got two interceptions this year he didn't bite on the double move. And if you're a freshman wide receiver there and you realize that the corner's got four yards of cushion on you, you just got to sit it down. You're not going to get the double move takeoff on that corner. So if he sits down right there, he picks up 10 yards. And later on, maybe next year, him and Keegan will be on the same page. They were not on that play. Well, it's used up almost seven minutes on this drive. Here, they use a draw play. Selwyn Simpson, he's going to go in for a touchdown. Oh, what a terrific call. 18-yard touchdown run. 
Simpson. Not Selwyn Simpson on the Lafayette draw play. Yeah, beautiful play call there by John Garrett. Coach John Garrett did a good job. He spread them out. And this is what I was talking about. On first down, you got to throw the ball. And on the downs where you're going to get pass coverage. And this is a down where Lehigh again played zone coverage. A little bit of man under. You can see some of the guys turning. Wetzel comes in. Great pickup by Burke. And that opens up everything. Give the wide receivers a lot of credit, too. Jordan Hall and Litka made a great block downfield to spring it. In the kick, the extra point is Jeffrey Kortenbrock. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 47 seconds on the clock in the first quarter. As Lafayette uses up a bunch of time, runs a lot of plays, scores the touchdown. We'll be back. A lot of VIPs on the sideline. John's one of them. Here's John. Thank you, Gary. So many good things happening at the college these days. Today, Steph Dahl, he is the uh, director of the Brad Dyer Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Yusuf, welcome to the Lafayette Sports Network. Tell us about the Dyer Center and uh, what it's all about, maybe how alumni can get involved. Yeah, the Dyer Center is the campus home for innovation and entrepreneurship. We're helping students ignite exemplary careers through innovation, creativity, and intelligent risk-taking. As everyone knows, it's no longer about what you know, but how you've applied it. And the Dyer Center is where our students come take what they're learning in that classroom and apply it to problems in the real world that they're passionate about. It really was the brainchild of a good friend of ours down in Dallas. We know he's watching now. Hello to Brad right. Dyer. We know you love football. Yusef, thanks for a few minutes. We appreciate it. Go Parks! Back to you, Gary. Kickoff comes to Zathan Hill. Zathan Hill brings it out over the 30 before he is tackled by Brian Riley. Should make mention that with the last drive, Keegan Shoemaker moved into sixth place all time in single season passing yards. He's now 2,461 as he passes Marco Glavich by just a yard. Well, Marco Glavich, that's saying something. Freshman year, Lafayette converted two fourth downs on that drive, ran the ball effectively between the tackles, not too much wide. But remember, they completed, the, again, took a turnover and turned it into points, something they've struggled with a little bit, taking turnovers and converting them into points. Rashawn Allen stays in the backfield. I'll recap that drive for you right after this first play. They give it to Allen, trying to cut back against the grain, and the grain was there waiting for him to put him down as a tackle is made on the play by Billy Schaefer. The drive for Lafayette, a dozen plays to go 50 yards. They use six minutes and 14 seconds. Four pass plays, eight rushing plays, and as Mike mentioned, a couple of fourth down conversions. Yeah, how good has Billy Schaefer been for Lafayette? When he got healthy, he's just so big and so long. And that's what people talk about now. The weak side linebacker, length, can cover in the flat, can make plays across the, the football field. Back to throw the football is Beesmer. He's looking, fires it out here. That's going to be a good catch. And that, I think, will be a first down. Depends on the spot. They will make it at the 42-yard line as the ball caught by Dambach. And Eric Mitchell was right underneath that. What a good throw by Beesmer. A good throw for him confidence-wise to get a little bit of, uh, of something going here is that's going to be the last play of the quarter. So after the 10-yard completion and the first down, the first quarter is in the books. Here's how Lafayette scored that initial touchdown. They lead it 7-0. Stay with us. So good news. Bring the roar. Good news for the Leopards at the moment. This time, uh, the tackle is made by Der Deron Gilbert. Sathan Hill carries the football. He'll get it up over the 45 to the 46, a gain of four. And it brings up a second and six. And two good-looking freshmen there. Zathan Hill's going to be terrific. He had some injuries this year, had some terrific games. And then, you obviously, you make the tackle there by Deron Gilbert, who's one of the kind of the uh, lead freshmen for Lafayette. Ian Grayson comes hustling in for Lafayette at linebacker. As back to throw the ball is Beesmer. He's going to fire a quick out here. As again, the ball caught, caught by Austin Dambach. So he has, catches 25 and 26 so far for the season. Knocked out of bounds by Caleb Burr. And that will move the change to the Lafayette 44-yard line, a gain of 10. Well, Lafayette playing some soft corners, especially to the field. And Beesmer showing a strong arm. That is a really nice-looking throw as you get a look at the Lafayette starting defense there. Earl, Jordan, Dickens, Schaefer. Some great linebackers. Earl playing down a little bit more now because of some injuries. Mitchell and Thomas in the in the back. Second and ten. And the ball off. Carrying it is Zathan Hill. And Hill will get a couple of yards before Malik Ham is there. 
to make the tackle. Malik's had another great year. Over 40 tackles, 10 and a half tackles for a loss, seven sacks, a block kick. Malik, the sophomore, made the All-Patriot League team last year as a rookie, rookie of the year. Gain of two, second and eight. Well, this is where you want the, the Lehigh offense if you're Lafayette's defense. You want them in second and long. You want to be able to turn some guys loose. And we'll see if Manny Rojas, the defensive coordinator, he hasn't brought a lot of blitzes here. We'll see if he brings guys like Olivas, maybe, and Mitchell off the top of your screen. Nobody this time. They bring four, stepping up and stepping away from a tackle. Nice job by Beesmer. So Beesmer, who has run for 30 yards, uh, 1.6 per carry, has in on the tackle for Lafayette, Eric Mitchell, along with uh, number 42, and that's Major Jordan. First time we mentioned his name in this ball game. That's a gain of 13 yards. Yeah, and, and Lafayette had the right defense. They had Marco Olivas just spying Beesmer. He just lost track of him, and he escaped out the front side and then missed the tackle. But Lafayette had the right defense. Three-man rush with a spy on the quarterback, and my concern coming into the game was Beesmer's ability to run the football. Keeping the ball. Beesmer looking. He's getting pressure again. He'll throw it away. No, he will not. He found a guy short and got the ball to Number 87, catching that ball is Alex Snyder, tackled on the play by Major Jordan, and that ends up being a pretty decent gain. They'll pick up seven yards and bring up a second and three. Well, Beesmer having a very good second series here, just kind of getting his feet wet as well. Remember, this is his first Lafayette Lehigh game. As you get a look at the big tight end, pick that football up and pick up some good yardage and second and three if you're Lehigh these are the kind of downs that you want to have downs that you can open the playbook up against Lafayette's uh, defense and defensive line he's very 6-1 and they're gonna get a first down here and a good drive still moving the pile oh my finally the pile collapses inside the 10-yard line as uh, they're gonna get the ball down it looks like to the eight-yard line and that was sheer power they'll put it at the nine a gain of 13 yards and a good leg drive there by hill we talked about him here lafayette just taking him up high you need to get down low Olivas up high on the uh, on the around the shoulder pads nobody going down low against lehigh and they get a little extra help from their offensive lineman this is a nice looking drive for lehigh to answer the lafayette touchdown started at their own 32 yard line they're down to the nine this is where lehigh likes the trick plays they like the pick plays and the y hide and drags and Things like that. Nathan Hill has the football. Hill cuts up inside. Oh, did he get hit? Oh, my. He was met head on. That's coming up was Yazir Thomas along with Deron Gilbert. And they said, hello, Mr. Hill. They put him down at the five, a gain of four. Yeah, he got through the initial hole. And then uh, you see uh, YT just come up and kind of lay the wood right at the five. He does pick up three yards, but watch this hit. Boom. The two of them took him straight back. Lafayette's got to come up with a big defensive play. This is where you need penetration from guys like Barnett and Hill and Billy Schaefer. These guys have been very good down close to the goal line in these situations for Lafayette. It's Hill again. Hill cuts up inside touchdown. Found a little bit of a seam. He cut through that seam, and he goes in from the five-yard line for a 7-6 ball game, a 68-yard drive in 10 plays. Yeah, not good defense by Lafayette there. Gave up too much yardage on some of the passes to the outside, too much cushion by the corners, and give Lehigh some credit. They have been able to run the football better and better each week. And this Zathon Hill, he's the guy that had it going when they were in the middle of the season, went through that three-game winning streak or four-game winning streak. He was the guy that carried them on the ground. And you see what Lehigh can do. They want to run the football. Both these teams have to do it. Hennings has been perfect this year in extra points, 16 for 16. Trying to tie this ball game up at the 10:40 mark of the second period. The kick is up, and the kick is good. We are knotted at 7-7. Seven, seven. Zathan Hill scores his fifth touchdown of the year. We'll be back. Right now, as we mentioned, Georgetown Holy Cross, no score. Lafayette needs a good return here. See J.J. Younger, who's a guy you know, a couple years ago on this field, C.J. Emil took one all the way back for a touchdown here. And Going to come down to Younger at the two-yard line. Almost slips and falls. And now he runs up the middle, and he'll get clocked around the 
18 yard line where Lafayette will put it in play first and 10. Well, again, the decision making right now, J.J. Younger, he's got to do a better job. You can't catch the ball going backwards like that. That's got to be a fair catch. That ball hung in the air. You've got to give your offense a chance. And right there, J.J. Younger, he wants to make a big play. You can't fault him for that. But uh, he's got to make a better decision there. Remember, the, the, the decisions they put in this year to fair catch the football on kickoffs brings the ball out to the 25-yard line. You can't catch the ball going backwards. And, you know, continually Lafayette set back. They've started almost every drive except the interception inside their own 20. John Gay will be in the backfield for Lafayette. So far, Simpson has rushed for 38 yards on six carries. Shoemaker, seven for nine for 45 yards throwing the ball. It is Gay. Oh, Gay gets nailed immediately as the tackle made by Eric Slater, the outside linebacker. And again, they were blitzing, Mike. Yeah, came in off the backside. They've shot the backside B gap a couple times. And take a look at the right side right here. It's just a little bit of a twist inside. And Burke gets a little overextended into the front side A gap. And like you said, some movement up front, some stunts. Anytime you take two D linemen and you cross them, that's a stunt. And Lafayette didn't pick that one up. And again, a lot of negative plays for Lafayette. Just a couple of splash plays so far. Interesting uh, philosophies on both sides defensively. One team not blitzing at all on the quarterback and the other team doing a lot of it. And both of them, for the most part, it's been working. Back to throw. Shoemaker, he's got to fire down the middle. And it's going to be knocked down. It was intended for Julius Young. Eight, uh, number eight, Marquise Wilson was there. And the ball kind of got splashed in between the three of them, and it's just an incomplete pass. Yeah, Julius Young actually did a good job to break that up. That should have been intercepted. He's throwing this ball into double coverage, and he's got a crossing route right there. Nick Pearson, the first play I've seen Nick Pearson in the game. He's still hobbling around on that bad ankle. That could have been offensive interference by Julius Young. But the, a ball that was ill-advised throw when you're down in your own territory and almost almost like a punt. But uh, you cannot turn the ball back over to Lehigh. Who did a good job offensively on the last drive. Now Lafayette third and long. Sam McCloskey was also in on that hit, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. A little high. Nice job by Marquise Wilson, as uh, that was intended for senior Julian Spigner. And Lafayette will go one, two, three, and out. Yeah, and Julian Spigner wouldn't have had the first down either way. Good pick up inside by the running back. You see Julian right there. He runs about a 12 yard out. Wouldn't have picked up the first down. Would have got them a little distance to punt this football away. But if you take a look, I mean, you got the punt returner standing right at the 50 yard line. So this should be great field position for Lehigh. Jalen Floyd is back to receive the punt. He only averages 1.3 yards per return. Obviously, a lot of fair catches. This one is away. Partially almost blocked. blocked. Yeah, or maybe, maybe it was tipped. And it will again get a Lafayette bounce and again end up right at the 50 yard line. So a 35 yard punt. But Lehi with good field position when we come back, 7 7. This day always brings out special occasions. Uh, Dan Yankovic, class of 74, his son David, class of 08. Uh, Dan, first of all, to you, uh, your 50th Lafayette Lehigh game. Back in the day, did you ever think you'd make 50? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, quite a string, you know, and it's it's cool. I'm lucky we live in the area in Bucks County. Um, I almost missed a couple games. Uh, our oldest son, I, I skipped an adoption meeting, and my sister almost chose this date for her wedding. Oh, no, no, no. And, and I told her she couldn't do that. <laughs> but David, uh, you know, class of 08, you have some special memories. You're one of the few. You've never lost to Lehigh. Is that correct? Undefeated against Lehigh. You believe it? Yeah. This field, some of our best memories on this field. Jonathan Hurt caught a great pass from Pat Davis uh, right here in this corner that we stand right now. And then good buddy Kyle Reiter caught a diving touchdown catch right on the other side of the field. Love this rivalry. Uh, great place in my heart. Lucky my father's taken me to these games for 25 plus years. Um, never miss them. Unbelievable stuff. That's what it's all about. Gary Michael, back to you guys. All right, John, thank you very much. That pass is completed to Jack Sutton as he's tackled by Major Jordan at the 44 yard line. So after a two yard run, a four yard pickup brings up a big third and four. I like what Lehigh's doing offensively again. You know, they've struggled. They only put up six points last week, was in the red zone against Sacred Heart. 
a good defense about four or five times just couldn't get the ball in the end zone resulted in two field goals but uh, so far they're they're allowing Beesmer to, to settle in offensively and deliver strikes he's done a pretty good job big call right here to keep this drive alive back to throw great protection for Beesmer he's looking all over the field can't find anybody with a brown shirt now he wants to go deep and it's gonna be just a little too far he was trying to find Austin Dambach out of Fombell, Pennsylvania, and Dan Ball could not come up with it as the uh, coverage by Billy Schaefer. Yeah, and the cool coaches for Lehigh were screaming at Beesmer to run the football here. Lafayette with just a three-man rush. Nothing happened. They triple team Malik Cam on the inside, and there was nothing there for Lafayette. So you got to be aware of the fake. In these type of games, You've got to be able to go punt safe and be able to pick up all the uh, identified eligible receivers. You've got to be aware of a fake here. Good high punt. Fair catch is called for, and it is dropped to Chris Webb. And Webb will have the ball on the 10-yard line. Lafayette has started their drives on the 17, the 18, and the 18. They had that one on the 50-yard line after the interception, which led to the touchdown. Yeah, they can't seem to find really any field position here. And what it does is it shuts down your playbook. And you must be able to run the ball effectively out of these areas. You know, run it effectively in the red zone going in and run it effectively coming out. And you see Selwyn Simpson, he's back in there. He's had a couple of really nice runs and a couple of TFLs. And the pressure always coming from Lehigh on first down. Well, they'll start this drive with 7.57 on the clock. Here comes the pursuit. And he cannot get the edge. Good pursuit by Lehigh. They've had good pursuit the whole ball game. The tackle made by Jalen Floyd. Also over there was uh, Michael Lawrence, Lawrence Sell. And uh, it'll be a loss of a yard. Well, again, you know, Lafayette is finding no success on the boundary versus this Lehigh defense. They're doing a great job kind of setting the edge. And Lafayette is not setting the edge. So you got to almost put those plays in the back of your playbook and think we got to go a little bit more vertical, a little bit more downhill, get the double teams, get the linemen up to the second level. The outside for Lafayette has been nothing for them. Passing situation for Shoemaker. Long count, steady hands it off. No, he doesn't. He fires the ball in a little bit of a slant pattern. That is successful. Julian Spigner makes the catch. Spigner will get it up to the 17-yard line. That's a gain of eight yards. That'll bring up a third and three. Another look. Yeah, Spigner's a big body. Watch him just get inside. That's an RPO. Just a good throw, good position there. Jalen Floyd, nothing much he can do about that with the big body, that six foot three, 200 pound body of J uh, Julian Spigner, who played his high school ball right down the road here. He did at Bethlehem Catholic High School. Julian Spigner was a quarterback in high school and a very good one. Keep your eye on Chris Webb. He's a guy that's very athletic. He's in the slot down here at the bottom. Back to throw. Firing's got a man. That's a first down. Catching the ball is a, a Z. Fumbled. Diamante, and he fumbles the football. He got back on it. Oh, it was Chris Webb. I'm sorry. Chris Webb with the catch. He's a guy I think really can do some things in the slot for Lafayette. Got to protect the football once you catch it, but he opened up late here. Good pick, uh, pick up on the blitz. That was a 15-yard gain. Here comes Simpson. Simpson again runs into the back of his blockers and can't go anywhere. So the tackle is made by Jackson Michaels, along with, again, Eric Slater, who is in there. And again, there is a loss on the run play, a loss of two. Yeah, looking at it right now, I mean, I'm looking at almost five rushes that have been negative, right, Pete? One, two, three, four, five rushes that have gone for negative yardage. And Jaden uh, Sutton has one run for negative yardage as well as John Gay. So that's seven plays that have been negative yardage running the football for Lafayette. Leigh on the season gives up 133 yards rushing in a ball game. They only get 72. That's a lateral. So that comes out to Selwyn Simpson, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll just be a two-yard two yard gain. That's going to end up being a running play. And again, the offense continuing to test the flats and continuing to test. That's really just a long handoff to Selwyn Simpson to the outside. So the adjustments at halftime for Lafayette are going to be huge. They're going to have to try to understand we're having trouble getting to the boundary and kind of change things up. Remember, the big run they had was on a draw that went back up the middle. So again, maybe quarterback draw, something where you can get the ball in between the hash marks. Lehigh very quick on the edges. 
Elliott right now averaging point two yards per rush. That doesn't get it done. That's and that average down. is going to go down. Wetzel's there. Jalen Floyd is there. And nothing much that uh, freshman quarterback Keegan Shoemaker could do there. As the loss will be back to the 28-yard line. That'll be a loss of four. And that's Wetzel again. Again, they're having trouble picking him up. He's coming in. He's feeling his way through that offensive line. Watch him. He's going to come right up inside the A-gap. Jaden Sutton just fans on him. It's a poor job by the freshman Jaden Sutton making a block on, obviously, Wetzel, one of the best players in the league. Got to be able to protect your quarterback. Fourth punt by Corden Brock. Back to receive it is Floyd. This time a good high punt. Floyd cannot do much with it. It gets a good Lafayette bounce. It's going to roll and roll and be down right at the 30-yard line. That's a nice punt. 42 yards by Corden Brock. And, of course, coming up, as always, is the halftime show brought to you by Farmers Insurance. As we'll have interviews, we'll have stats, we'll have highlights, we'll have John, we'll have Phil, we'll have Mike. Beat Nile to pizza or something. <laughs> At the half. You know, when you and I kind of uh, talked about this game and the way we felt it was going to go, this is similar exactly. to what we thought, yep. right? I mean, we, you know, both offenses just kind of struggling. Lafayette, I think, has just been struggling because of their field position. Lehigh has had better field position, but I'm sort of impressed with the Lehigh offense so far. They're moving the football. Nathan Hill, he has it. No, he doesn't. Beesmer got hit just as he let it go and threw a beautiful pass as the ball is. Uh, the tackle was made by Caleb Burr. Bibbins. The ball caught for the first time in the ball game by Devin Bibbins, who is their leading receiver at the 42, a gain of 12. Yeah, that was that little RPO, and it took a lot of time and just a lot of cushion again. Caleb Burr's given a lot of cushion out there. Can't do that with Bibbins. Four for six for 36 yards now for Beesmer. Hasn't been any flag so far either. Zathan Hill is there running the football. Tackle is made on the play by Bush. Uh, check it by 26. That's Marco Olivas. Yeah, Olivas, they came with a blitz that time. Lafayette brought both outside linebackers up close to the line of scrimmage. And you see the catch there by Bibbins. Gain of three on the play. The ball right in midfield. 63 catches. 10 yards a catch for Bibbins. Has six touchdowns. It's a very crucial drive for Lafayette because Lehigh is going to get the ball back after they won the toss and deferred. Back by, oh, it's intercepted. intercepted. As the Olivas. ball thrown right to Olivas. He went up and got it. And the tackle is made on the play by Zathan Hill. But Lafayette with their second turnover of the ball game, their second interception of the ball game. Marco Olivas goes to get it. That's his first interception as a Lafayette Leopard. Well, he's just in, in, does a great job. He was coming on the blitz the first play. The second play, it looks like he kind of toned it down a little bit. He seemed just kind of hanging right there. And that is an incredibly athletic catch by the freshman. You know, that kid, what a bright future he has. We're going to have the pleasure are watching him for three more years but he has been he could do nothing more this year as a freshman mm -hmm. and still be one of the best players um, for Lafayette defensively big big time play well the last turnover they turned into a touchdown this time they have their best field position of the football game and it's going to be a quarterback draw up in the middle nice run by Keegan Shoemaker and Shoemaker will get it to the 25 yard line that'll be a first down a gain of 12 on the play Good patience that time by Keegan, allowing the blocker. So it's going to be a down, down, and pull the backside H back and pull the backside guard. So you see Burke getting up in there, and you see the tight end Stiliano. So those are plays I think Lafayette's going to have to use a little bit more in between the tackles, go straight at. Whenever teams got speed and the advantage of quickness, you want to go right at them. You don't want to run wide and really play into what they do well. Devine Buckman was there to make that tackle. Selwyn Simpson in the backfield. Four Lafayette, first and 10 from the 25 of Lehigh. Back to throw Shoemaker. He's looking over the middle. He fires, and it's intercepted. Wetzel. As the ball is caught by Keith Wetzel, and Wetzel will try to run it out of there, and he'll get out to about the 12 or 13-yard line. And that's a force by Keegan Shoemaker. He had both people on the right side, the tight end wide open. He had Selwyn Simpson wide open. 
and that's just a force down the field as John Garrett's going to get together with his quarterback. As you see, Wetzel, you know, in these games, you and I talked about it, linebackers, he's got two sacks and an interception already in this game. Linebackers come up big, whether they're for Lafayette or they are for Lehigh, and boy, is he a good football player. We, wanted, we made him our impact player of the game on the defensive side. He has not disappointed. But he has disappointed the Lafayette Leopards so far. The ball on the Lehigh 13 yard line. They can't turn that turnover into any points. Rashawn Allen in the backfield along with quarterback Beesmer. They were trying to force that play down the field. Allen has it. He's not going far, but here's that scrum again. And they'll mark the ball after they whistle it dead at the 15. A uh, whole bunch of Leopards in there. We'll give Marco Olivas maybe credit for the initial hit. They're going to. It'll be a gain at the 16 yard line of three. And you see how maybe how Lehigh kind of keeps that playbook a little bit tighter coming out of this is the worst field position they've had and it comes on a turnover and going back to that turnover. That's just a force down the middle of the field by Keegan Shoemaker. Can't do that. He's trying to hit Litka down the middle of the field. Litka doesn't have a lot of catches this year. You got to take what the defense gives you, not try to bite off too much. And by the way, Holy Cross is beating Georgetown by a 7 0 score. This play going nowhere as Allen is going to get tackled at the 16. No gain on the play. I was going to say, Lafayette looking maybe to get another possession out of this half. Now it's 14 0 in favor of Holy Cross. Looking at a timeout right there by Lafayette, their first. So we get our first time out down on the field. It gives me an opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, Phil Abella puts together the notes for this ball game, and he wrote a really terrific paragraph that really describes this ball game. He wrote, "Rivalry games occupy one line of a schedule, like every other game on the ledger. But for those immersed in the Lafayette Lehigh rivalry, the game carries a heavier weight and offers a grander opportunity. The matchup can shine a career-defining spotlight on an accomplished player." and provide a comparable showcase for average players to accomplish things not previously witnessed in their careers. In the one game when the levels of attention and the scrutiny far surpass those from the rest of the season, there's no team trophy or clever nickname for the series, but Lafayette and Lehigh fans, families, friends, and alumni will gather sometimes together in locations across the country to watch the 155th installment, joining the thousands who make the trek to the Lehigh Valley to watch the annual renewal of Lafayette Lehigh. Phil LaBella with a great summary of what this game is all about. Third and seven from the 16 yard line. Delay a game too. Lehigh comes out of a timeout with a delay a game. How does that happen? Yeah, it's just obviously getting you're not on the same page. You get out of the huddle late. So Lafayette with an opportunity here defensively. You kind of get a I, feel for what Manny Rojas will do here. I doubt if he'll put it up here, do you think? I think well, they'll probably run the ball with their uh, sophomore quarterback. I think they're right where they want to be, 7-7. Seven, seven. They're at home. They're in a situation here. I'm not sure they've got to run a quarterback draw. He is going to run the draw, and he is. He's going to get the first down. He'll be close. He's got it. Tackle by Olivas. Tackle by Deron Gilbert. Major Jordan in there. Both teams have, have kind of surprised the other team. This is straight quarterback draw. You see right there, Major Jordan just can't get off the block in time to make the tackle. 13-yard pickup. This isn't going to get any yardage. As again, the clock now allowed to continue to run. Running the football was uh, Raiden with Sean Allen. He called another timeout. What you're trying to do is force a fourth down where you have an opportunity maybe to block a punt or return a punt. But Lafayette has not returned a punt all year for more than eight yards. So uh, the opportunity was there on third down and long. Interesting timeouts here. He could have easily let this clock. I mean, it didn't look like Lehigh was interested in calling a timeout. But you are, should you call your third one, going to give them two more opportunities to make some. I mean, there's always the potential for a big play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, but the, the question is here, you know, John's trying to create, the coach John Garrett is trying to create an extra possession here for his offense is what he's trying to do. And I, obviously you look at the last possession, they gave away points right there down inside the red zone and that that can't happen. So knowing that Lehigh is going to get the ball coming at halftime, the field position that he started with has got to be concerning as well. Last night, Dan Bengal was inducted into the Maroon Club Hall of Fame. Uh, what a terrific linebacker he was, class of 98. 
remember calling his ball games, and he was another one of those great linebackers. We've had a lot of great linebacker play this year, and sure. obviously over. Wetzel's uh, done a great job today for uh, for Lehigh. Yeah, they've been very, very good all over the field. Levis with an interception, Wetzel with an interception, two linebackers playing very, very well. Lafayette has one timeout left. See if they uh, want to use it here, if there was not much happening on this play. Again, it's Allen with the football. Allen looking to go somewhere. And the Lafayette pursuit does hem him in a bit, but he's going to pick up about eight yards on that carry up to the 32-yard line. And did Lafayette call another timeout? They did. They did. So they're trying to do something here. And the question here is if Lehigh just runs the football yeah. here, they're going to be able to run the clock out. So it's kind of a useless timeout. The opportunity was there on third down and long where Lafayette uh, allowed Beesmer to get out of the pocket and pick up that first down. So Lehigh has rushed now for they have 80, 73 yards on the board. I have them for 80, so we'll see how that shakes out at the half. Lafayette has rushed for 48 yards. Lehigh has thrown for 48 yards, and Lafayette has thrown for 68 yards. So I guess we were spot on with some struggling uh, offenses. No, I think struggling is a pretty good <laughs> adjective to use in this uh, situation. And I think both teams, you know, you weigh out the, the rushing yardage. Lafayette has had seven plays of negative yardage, so that's got to change in the second half if they're going to think about winning the first time in about five years. Well, you are with the numbers say you are, and uh, now running the football, looking for a little space. That's going to be a first down. So now the clock will be allowed to be run out. Tackle is made on the play by Weichel, Romeo Weichel in on that tackle on Hill, well, and give, that's going to end the half. Well, you give Lehigh a chance to run one more play here, Gary, and they may chuck it deep. He picked up seven on that play. Now nothing lost. You might as well throw the bomb. They'll fire it over the middle. It'll be caught, and that's going to end the half. So from the 39-yard line, they'll get the ball to the 40. A 21-yard pickup. Now Lehigh, of course, can call a timeout, and they do. <laughs> Odd sets of timeouts here. Really odd sets of timeouts. Lehigh with an opportunity. They were they were ready to go into the locker room and not worry about this, but you give them an opportunity to run an extra play. Good throw here by Beesman right over the top and the big tight end. He's got two catches today, goes up, take it away from Otis Thrasher. Who's kind of why back I, from injury. I questioned the second timeout. Yes. I, I didn't uh, I didn't see the opportunity to give Lafayette the ball back. Well, you give them an opportunity right here to throw it in the end zone, which they did not have when they were on their own 25-yard line. So that that's a and something you got to think you know, about. Jorge Porter Real has not caught a ball yet. Nope. And only one catch by Bibbins. The two together came into the ball game with 115 catches. Yeah, you, you just can't allow anybody to get behind you here. Lafayette's got should be playing back further. They got too many guys close to the line of scrimmage. You can't allow anybody to get behind you, and you got to be willing to knock the football down. They're going to rush three. Keith Earl trying to get in there to the quarterback, and he'll just simply fire it away, and that will end the first half of football. As we have decided absolutely nothing, we've got a 7-7 ball game. In game number 155, the defenses have dominated. And of course, we'll try to chat with uh, head coach John Garrett before he heads into the locker room as uh, John Leone will run him down and we'll have a little conversation. Here's John. Thanks, Gary. Real quick, coach, two evenly matched teams. What do you do to uh, break the stale? Well, it's a hell of a game. All right, we're uh, at 0-0, zero, zero, and uh, it all comes down to execution. John, you've been around coaching a long time. That's what it is. I've sure been around you, Coach. Good luck. Go get him in the second half. Go Leopards. Got it. Back, Gary Michael, back to you guys. All right, John, thank you very much. John and Phil Ng will get in position as we've got our halftime coming up. So stay tuned for the Farmers Insurance Halftime Report. All right, Michael, uh, the locker room. What uh, what do you think both coaches were talking about, and how does Lafayette win this game? Well, uh, both teams have to say, guys, it, we got 30 minutes to win a football game here. For Lehigh, you're in the ball game. You weren't supposed to be, honestly, from a lot of people thinking the way Lafayette has played recently, Lehigh struggling offensively. You know, when Lehigh doesn't have an offense that can light up the scoreboard, you think, hey, this is an opportunity for Lafayette. They played good defense, but, you know, in their locker room, you got 30 minutes to win a ball game. Like Filling said, you've never beaten Lehigh. The team that comes out and sustains the energy throughout those 30 minutes 
sustains energy regardless of what happens, even if you give up a touchdown, 30 minutes of relentless energy is what it's going to take to take this back to Easton. Last time Lafayette won a football game against Lehigh's back in 2014. They traveled all the way to New York City to win that ball game at Yankee Stadium. It will be Lehigh who will be receiving the football as Lafayette will kick it off. Lehigh won the toss and deferred. There you get a look at their head coach Tom Gilmore in his first season here at Lehigh came into this ball game with a 76 87 record as he has spent 14 years at Holy Cross where he was two time coach of the year well, had a Patriot League championship in 2009 and then last season he spent last season as an assistant coach at Wake Forest. Yeah, he's been around and he's got great defensive mind does a nice job. And he's done a great job with this defense. You know, Lehigh, again, always thought of as an offensive football team, but defensively playing well. Here is John Leon. Hey, Gary, Michael, real quickly, uh, Yasir Thomas just went into the uh, uh, medical uh, tent uh, with Matt Bailey. It doesn't appear to be anything too serious, but it's something we'll keep an eye on. I'll have a follow-up for you in a moment. All right, John, we certainly hope that is not serious. One of Lafayette's co-captains, of course. Back to receive the kickoff for Lehigh is Ethan Hill along with Jalen Floyd and kicking the ball off will be Cordenbrock. Jeff Cordenbrock will tee it up. Cordenbrock's gone with a lot of these kind of high kicks to around the 20 to 25 yard line kind of approaches and then stutter steps. And Lafayette has given up pretty good field position on a lot of these kickoffs. All right second half there it is and it's going to come down to about the 12 yard line where it is collected by Hill and that will be a good tackle good open field tackle and that tackle came from Billy Schaefer who's in there also on special teams looks like the officials are going to put the ball at the 28 yard line. First and 10 Lehigh. Now we'll see what Lehigh does here coming out of the locker room, what their adjustments have been. I think they got to continue to just keep themselves in a situation where they are in touch of a win going into the fourth quarter. They did not have good time of possession in that first half, but still rushed the ball for 81 yards. Freshman Zathan Hill is in the ball game. At running back, he's got uh, 31 yards, 5.2 yards per carry. And he's going to get it. You notice how slowly they hand that ball off. Fumble on the play. Fumble. Lafayette has it. They're going to whistle it dead, but they're going to give the ball to Lafayette. Olivas again. And Marco Olivas will come up with it. He just simply strips Ethan Hill, and they don't let him move it forward. But they, uh, I think Billy Schaefer might have been the one to make the hit. The uh, question is, is this ball loose before he's on the ground? And Billy Schaefer hit him from the outside. Olivas from the inside. They already signal Lafayette ball, but I'm sure they'll give it another look. Yeah, let's take a look right here. That ball. Yeah, you can see it. That ball's play. It's on the ground. Yeah, the ball came out on the ground, and Levis came away with it. Watch, great, great job here. Watch Schaefer's helmet right on the football. That ball is out. That's going to be Lafayette football. They need to take advantage of this. No question about it. That's a turnover, and Levis now with two takeaways away from the Lehigh offense. From the 24-yard line, first and 10 Lafayette in the backfield. Instead, it's a quick throw out here, and that is Julian Spigner, who will turn it upfield and get to about the 15. Let's quickly go to John. Very quickly, Gary. Yeah, it was an issue. I cleared it with Matt. So you're here, Tom. Actually good to go. That gain is a gain of eight yards. A good first down play for Lafayette. Brings up a second and two. Well, just like you run it coming out of your end zone, you've got to be able to run it down here as well. We'll see what Lafayette's adjustments have been to running the football. They've tried to go wide in that first half. We'll see if they turn it over. Maybe Keegan Shoemaker on a quarterback draw. They put Stilianis in the backfield. He's just back there to protect the quarterback. And that's going to be a... Good play by Lehigh's defensive end, Michael Lawrencell, out of Troy, Michigan, as the sophomore makes that tackle right at. Well, in fact, they're going to lose a yard on the play. Uh, again, there's just a, a little bit of a late decision by Keegan right here. He's looking for the fade and doesn't have it. Right here, he's got to step up in the pocket. And you see Nathan Slater there, the left guard freshman for Lafayette, working against uh, Michael Lawrencell. And Lawrencell did a good job getting off the block. Big third down here. You need seven you don't want three 
They are in position for a Cordon Brock field goal. They give the ball off to Selwyn Simpson, and oh, he yeah. moved the pile far enough. Yeah. He needed to get to the 14. He got to the 13, and that's going to be a four-yard pickup and Lafayette's ninth first down. Again, running it downhill, going behind the guys that can make a difference, and that's Joe Grunhofer, Burke, Slater inside. Great point of attack blocking, and like you said, when you got a 225, watch the double team right here. And Selwyn just cuts it back behind the nose guard. The nose guard over pursues. I like the downhill movement there, running it on third and two. has got to be a perk for Lafayette's offense. Well, let's see if Lafayette can capitalize on the third Lehigh turnover of the game. Again, they move Taggart this time in the backfield. For safety blitz. They're going to bring it around with the football is Litka. And Litka is going to get crushed out of bounds, but the hit came from Eric Slater, but he does get good yardage. It looks like they're going to put it around the eight-yard line. That'll be a five-yard pickup. Yeah, that's a long developing play. It's a reverse, so John Garrett pulling out a lot of stops here. Watch this. Litka very involved. Hasn't been involved a lot, but he's got great speed, long legs. Lafayette might have got away, I thought, with a hold on the outside there. Allowed to Litka to spring, but so far, Lafayette's got to avoid all penalties here. Got to put this in the end zone. I look for maybe some sort of a blitz from Lehigh and a double slant. Look for Julius Young. Penalties? They're not calling penalties. One no. penalty for five yards on each team. That's all we've seen. They are letting them play with the ball. Running Shoemaker as he cuts back, and he'll get inside the five. Close, but not there. He is not going to be there. He's going to be about a yard shy. He needed four. Looks like he got three to the four-yard line. Uh, Lehigh defense trying to come up big and cause a field goal or try a field goal here. Lafayette's been really, really good in third down and shorts and fourth down. They converted two fourth downs today and then a third down just a couple seconds ago to Selwyn Simpson. Lafayette is four for ten today on third down. This is a monster play, Gary. You got you got to pick this up, create a first down and goal. We'll see if maybe they go with a Selwyn Simpson. You've got to avoid any penetration if you're the offensive line. Really overloaded on the right side. And that's where they're going to go. Cutting back. And uh, the second effort, I think, got the first down. By being able to fall forward, Selwyn Simpson was able to get to the three. And I believe this will be good enough for a Lafayette first and goal to go. Boy, he is strong inside. And, you know, he doesn't go down on the first hit. They're going to measure this, but I think he's got it by at least a football. We had nothing but bad luck last week in spots and measurements. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> that, one official, did that one official kept marking everyone oh back a goodness. yard. And a couple of huge calls in the Colgate game kept us from keeping drives alive. I think it's going to be a first down by the length of the football. It is a first down for Lafayette. Boy, Needed Selwyn. one, got one. Give Selwyn Simpson credit in that offensive line. Yeah, again, vertical running downhill. Selwyn Simpson doing a nice job reading Wetzel. Remember, when you're running the ball downhill vertically in the A gap, you've got to find out where that backer goes, and you can move him with your eyes and you can move him with your legs. If you commit to a hole, him over pursue, and that's what Selwyn did there, and then used his strength. From the three. It's got to have seven here. Right again, they're going around the edge and cutting back touchdown. Selwyn Simpson looks like he was going to lose in the backfield. Wetzel had already penetrated. They're going to call a flag on Selwyn for spiking the ball. Sorry, Gary. They're going to call a celebration penalty on Selwyn Simpson. He celebrates a touchdown from three yards out. Yeah, good job by him just stuttering right there. He did a nice job just kind of holding his ground and not committing. He was very, very patient. Watch him get here. Good job by Grunhofer. Good job by Burke right there. Wow, Burke blocked two guys. He got on his man and then got to the second level. And a missed tackle by Wetzel. Not often that happens at the three. But the strength, that drive was all about Selwyn Simpson and the strength of him to get the ball on first downs, just a junior. Yeah. Great to watch him again next year. Wetzel got where he wanted to be and uh, never made the tackle. Important extra points. Interesting, too. You're looking right at yourself with that big screen <laughs> behind the uh, goalpost. So you can't let that be a distraction. It's down. Gordon Brock's kick is up. And it is good. I don't think we've given enough credit to Ed Rogowski, the snap. Yep. And we're going to call timeout. Sean O'Malley does the holding. 14-7 Lafayette.
So now the momentum maybe switches back to the Mountain Hawks. Back to throw the ball and firing a deep pass that is going to be knocked down as a good coverage downfield. The pass was intended for Alex Snyder. Coverage was supplied by Deron Gilbert. Let's go back and take a look at that fourth down play while we were chatting. Well, Lafayette again trying to go wide, and Lehigh is just setting the edge. Watch the corner come up, do a nice job. Right there is where he's got to put his foot in the ground and get vertical. You're not going to get to the edge. You know, Lafayette has tried the perimeter so many times today, it's surprising that they went back to it on such an important down. Second and ten, Rashaw Allen in the backfield. He will not get it. Instead, it'll be a sidearm throw out here and breaking away downfield. Carrying the football is to Dan Ball, and Dan Ball will get really good yardage. And Dan Ball is going to take it down to the 47. Let's see where they mark the ball. It'll be the 44-yard line in Lafayette territory. A 23-yard pickup. Oh, he's been the key guy today, Dan Ball. Again, that's just a quick screen to the outside, and that's what you want to do with Beesner. Get Beesner, get him some very easy throws to the outside, a long handoff, and you see the ability of uh, Austin there on the outside. That was a nice sidearm throw as they hand the ball off. No, keeping the ball, and then flipping it out here to Dan Ball, and Dan Ball will get tackled. Little trick play there, and. Uh, coming up a little bit angry was uh, Caleb Burr on that play <laughs> as he got taken out and he was not pleased about it. The gain is a gain of four. And he got tackled by Jack Sutton, the freshman wide receiver. Take a look here. This is a quarterback zone read and then the ability on the triple option. Now watch Caleb Burr is on the ground getting tackled by Bivens. It just that's kind of an odd play. We have not had one single holding call all game and both teams kind of living on the edge. Officials trying to keep uh, <laughs> keep their record straight and not calling a holding call. We've had a few that look like holding from the 39 second and six. Back to throw and getting away from the pressure is Beesmer. Beesmer will keep the ball in bounds. Finally, he'll get pushed out of bounds by number 97. That's Ryan Barnett at the 37 yard line. That's a gain of just two and bring up a third and six. Yeah, and uh, Malik Cam had him dead to rights. He just let him out. You can't let him get to the outside shoulder. If anything, you got to make him step up in the pocket. And Malik Cam had about a nine-yard loss on the quarterback, and Beesmer, great job by him spinning out of it and picking up some yardage. Big play here on a third and four, probably four down territory right now for Lehigh. They'll give it to Allen. Rashawn Allen waits for the hole to develop, and he will get the first down. It appears he is right at the first down marker, which is the 33-yard line. He needed four, and I think they've already made the signal. He got four. And again, good patience by him staying behind his blockers. And, you know, this offensive line has been in and out for Lehigh all year long. Fournier at left guard, Justin Girth, who moves to center after starting 11 games at right tackle. They finally got Damon Stewart back after injury, missing two games last week. First and 10, Lehi down by seven, 7.35 to go. In the third period, cutting back against the grain is out. And he will get the ball up to the 26-yard line, tackled on the play by Billy Schaefer. And that'll be a gain of seven. And again, you see how Lehigh runs the zone read. They, they keep it in the belly so long that you're not sure if he's got the ball or not. And that's a really nice cutback. I like that kid. He's going to be really, really good. He'll be around for a while. He's just a sophomore. Zathan Hill is a freshman. Second and three. Back to throw. Firing. And that'll be a good pass as it complete. It is. Caught the ball inbounds. The officials say getting it inbounds was uh, Devin Bibbins. Down to the 15-yard line, a gain of 11. First down number 11. Yeah, long throw to the outside. Let's get it. You're going to look at it coming right into your living room right here. Boy, that ball's right on the mark. Good catch. Good job keeping his feet inbounds. Tight coverage by Romeo Weichel. From the 15-yard line, first and 10. Keeping the ball, running with it is Beesmer. Beesmer looking, penalty flag. Are we going to get our first hold? Well, it should be. It was in the backfield there, and it looked like Malik Ham or maybe Colin Hurlbrink were trying to break away. And I think it is going to be. It's got to be a hold. It was not completed to the Mountain Hawk. He was in the vicinity. 
There are two flags actually down on the field. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, Keith Earl thinks it's going to be against them. And Lehigh's walking backwards, so. Uh, it would go back to the 25 yard, unless it's at the uh, point of the foul, which it normally is. It could go all the way back to the 30. Yes, it could. There's the call. Field, yep. That'll be declined, then we'll get the hole. There you go. Referees might not working properly. Like you said, Gary, I think it happened right around the 20, so it's going to end up being first down at about 25. It'll end up being a 15 yard penalty, even though it's a 10 yard penalty because it's a spot foul. And Lafayette's got to nope, be aware. They're going to mark it from the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage? Okay, so it's going to be first down at 20. Only the second penalty against Lehigh for 15 yards. So the ball back to the 25 yard line. Yeah, these are situations where both teams have kind of broken their tendencies by running the football in situations where you think pass. Readjusting is Allen. Back to throw. Beesmer. Beesmer looking over the middle. He's going to fire. He's got a man wide open. At the five yard line, wide open downfield is Devin Bibbins. And that will be a good catch, and that's exactly where they needed to go for the first down. Looks like they're going to mark it at the four. That's a 20-yard reception. Now Lafayette's playing again. Three-man rush and playing zone coverage behind it, and you have a linebacker against Devin Bivens, and Bivens is going to win that most of the time. So first down and 20 turns into first and goal inside the five. Allen from the four-yard line, first and goal to go. Allen looking to move the pile, and he will get to about the two. So he'll pick up a couple. We have not called the name today. We did not get any report that Jorge Puerto Real was injured. Yeah, he hasn't He's seen all him late, at all. but we have not seen him at all, and I don't think I've even seen him on the field. Yeah, these are, these are those situations where you've seen in the past where Lehigh uses their quarterback. Remember a couple of years ago, Shafnisky, a guy who could ride the wide run and then just kind of pick and choose where he wanted to run the football similar to the way Colgate runs it. So we'll see if they stay with the zone read here. Allen readjusts. Allen gets the ball. Allen tries to Oh, he ran right into a Lafayette linebacker. I think it was Major Jordan. It was Major Jordan. Another one of the great linebackers in the Patriot League this season. And that looks like it could be a loss of a yard. Back to the three. Now, again, I think Lehigh's got to throw the football right here. And, and you've got to be aware, if you're Lafayette, in the secondary of the pick plays. Two receivers close together, the down and the out route. You've got to be aware of it. You've had to have practiced it. This is where they like to sprint the quarterback out and get some sort of pick between the uh, two receivers. There you get a look at what both teams have done on third down today. Back to throw, Beesmer looking, firing, almost intercepted. As stepping in front for Lafayette was number 44, Deron Gilbert, the free safety. And he almost came up with the interception. Now looking like they're gonna kick the field goal here, bringing Henning on. Great play by the freshman. You know, Deron Gilbert has had some tough times this year so far as a freshman, but he's been asked to play and he had a knee injury early, but he's athletic enough to cover a big guy across the middle and he makes a monster play there. Hopefully saving four points. 20 yard field goal attempt here for Henning. He is 11 for 15 as long as the 45 yarder. Got to be aware of the fake too. He had a couple last week against Sacred Heart of 20 and 35 yards. Kick is up and the kick is good. So Lafayette keeps Lehigh behind by a 14 to 10 score at the four minute and 19 second mark as Austin Henning with the 20 yard field goal. That drive by Lehigh started on their own 34 yard line. All the way down to the three. That's a 64 yard drive in 12 plays. Well, if they look what Lehigh did. Obviously, they stopped Lafayette on the fourth down and two. They take it right down the field and score all the momentum right now with the brown and white. Let's go back to our trivia question while we have an opportunity and see how good your memory is. With an abundance of freshmen playing today, named the last freshman to win the MVP award in this game. He was certainly a popular freshman at Lafayette. And Drew Reed, 2013, on this field, threw for over 300 yards, raised the MVP trophy, raised the Patriot League championship trophy right here at Lehigh. Gary and I were 
on the scaffolding on the other side of the field. <laughs> yeah, freezing, freezing. but uh, warmed up a little bit when we saw Drew Reed put on a show for Lafayette. I think we've mentioned that we are in a new press box here at Lehigh. And of course, we would get it on the nicest day that you could possibly have for a football game. Ball is picked up by Webb. Jaden Sutton actually had his knee down. Did he really put his knee down? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what we got there. They're saying he There's did. There's the Bring the Roar. You all did a wonderful job with Bring the Roar. I'd like to see that play again. Yeah. Kickoff returns for Lafayette have just not been good, and, and uh, they they're going to have to do something over the over the uh, off season to to kind of gear that up because they they're making bad decisions. And that time, Jaden Sutton, another freshman, had his knee on the ground. Watch, take a look right here. Ball short. It's in between the U U. Yeah. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Balls on the ground. Knees on the ground. Great call. And Lafayette again with poor field position. From the 15 yard line, Leopards up by four. We're in the third quarter, 419 to go. Glad you're with us. I want to welcome those who have watched us on Masson today as the ball is caught by Z Zadok Scott. And the game is up to two. The 30. Tackle made by Ty G. Leach. Beautiful RPO right here. Put it in, pull it out. Big body getting inside the DB. Zadok Scott is a guy that can make a difference, and if he wants to, uh, to make a difference in these last 19 minutes. From the 30 yard line. And Cross was still winning 14 to nothing. And Bucknell, I believe, I just got a report that they have just taken the lead. Not going to go nowhere. Carrying the football is Jaden Sutton. Bucknell up 14 to 10. Jaden Sutton's going to lose a yard. A lot of dancing, like uh, John said, and Phil said. I mean, you got to get your foot in the ground and get vertical, even if you're only going to pick up a half a yard. But just far too many TFLs on first down. And again, the Lafayette offensive line getting pushed into the backfield a little bit. Defense is uh, as advertised for Lehigh. No question about it. Coming out wide, Julius Young to the right side of the field. Let's see if they can maybe take a long shot here on the second end long. There's the blitz. And the ball off, and that doesn't go anywhere. Jaden Sutton carries the football. And you're going to lose another yard. Back to back losses of a yard. Well, they're trying to run the ball into blitz. And when you run the ball into blitz, you got free guys to make plays. Lawrence Sell in on the tackle. And not really given uh, a lot of opportunity for the young quarterback, Keegan Shoemaker, to change the play. And he sees the safety coming down in the box there, number 28, who makes the tackle unblocked. I mean, you're not you're not going to block that guy. You got to do a better job. Number 29 actually was Ty Leach, who just made his first start this year against Colgate, making a big play. And we'll see if they bring more pressure. Looks like zone coverage to me. Maybe a four-man rush. Nope. There Here they come. The blitz. Here they come. And that pass is going to be too wide for Zadok Scott to come up with the catch. And you uh, get a big number one thrown up by Jalen Floyd. In on the coverage. Yeah, and he was holding on to to, to, to Zadok Scott, who had gone down to the marker and uh, turned around. And th again, it's not the third down play that that killed the drive. It's the first two plays of the drive for Lafayette, who gaining no yardage on the ground on first and second down. So they'll have to punt the ball away again. This is the fifth punt of the ball game for. I snap. Oh, and a good wow. high punt. That's one of the best punts of the year by Gordon Brock. And now Lafayette will down it. Wow, flipped the field there with that punt at the 23 yard line. That is a 49 yard punt. Momentum is on the side of Lehigh right now. Again, everything kind of changed when they had that fourth down and two, didn't pick it up. Let's go down to John. Thanks, Gary. Hey, Michael, 49 yards, no return on that punt. It flips the field position at this stage of the game. Put a circle around that play. That's a huge one right there if Lafayette's defense can uh, make this uh, make this happen on their side of the ball. Back to you guys. Yeah, John, it's all about the if. Let's see how the if turns out for Lafayette. First and 10, Lehigh from their own 23-yard line. Rashawn Allen is the running back. 
And instead, it's going to be Beesmer back to throw. Beesmer looking over the middle. He has his man. The ball is caught again by Damball. Austin Damball makes the catch, tackled on the play by Romeo Weichel. At the 42-yard line, a quick 19 yards. Michael now well, Lafayette just playing a three-man rush. You're not getting to the quarterback. They got five to block three. And Manny Rojas, the defensive coordinator for Lafayette, has yet to add an extra guy in. Just a great job by the offensive line. And honestly, any quarterback in America that starts at the Division I level can sit there and find a guy in zone coverage. Dan Ball just settled in down there and a good hard throw. Here running with the ball is Hill. And Hill will get it to the 48. He'll pick up a nice six yards on first down. You guys got to be thinking that they've hurt themselves so many times in this game and to be within four points going into the fourth quarter with just a minute left here in the third quarter. They're right where they want to be. Yeah, they've turned it over four times. Only led to two scores. If Lafayette wants to win this football game, they're going to have to turn some pressure loose on this quarterback. Hand the ball off. It's Rashawn Allen carrying. He will not get the first down. They'll mark him in Lafayette territory to the 49-yard line. So he'll pick up three yards and be one yard shy of the first down. Yeah, good job there by Major Jordan, just kind of scraping across the lineman eating up plays. I think it's been pretty decent versus the run. It's when the lot Lehigh is adjusted by throwing the ball on first down that Lafayette has not been able to put any pressure on the on the young quarterback. Allen in the backfield, they need a yard. He's got it. They won't get it. No, he didn't get it. No, good penetration that time by the Lafayette defensive line. And this is going to be interesting. Major Jordan, I think, the one in there at the bottom. When we turn the page here in this quarter, Gary, this is going to be a very interesting call for Tom Gilmore. Marco Olivas also in there. We go. To the fourth quarter we go. They will have an opportunity to talk it over. You get a look at Tom Gilmore. He's going to have to look at that sheet and see what he wants to come up with. Lafayette up by a 14 to 10 score at the end of three. We'll be back. It looks like the Patriot League championship has been decided. Holy Cross up 17 to nothing with uh, about they're gonna 12 punt. minutes to go. They're going to punt. In that game, and Lehigh has decided at least they're showing punt. <laughs> yes, they are. Austin Henning is back there. We've seen fake punts in this game before. This one it will not be. It'll be a fair catch called for by Webb. Webb will collect it at the 17 yard line. 30. Two yard punt. And Lafayette breathes a bit of a sigh of relief because he'll have the ball for a bit on the offensive end. It does tell you something about Tom Gilmore thinking that his defense is playing well today. And he that's telling me that he doesn't think this Lafayette offense can go 80 yards for a touchdown or even 70 yards for points. So that gives you an inkling about what uh, Tom Gilmore thinks about his defense and the way he's playing through this game. And now it turns over to John Garrett and he's going to see if he can come up with the right formations and the right plays and get his freshman quarterback to get the ball in the end zone. Lafayette with only 157 yards of total offense in this play game. Swing the ball out here. That I believe was a forward pass as Selwyn Simpson makes the catch. And they'll get get it to the 19, just a two yard gain before Davis Maxey is there to make the attack. Zadok Scott coming in, a couple more wide receivers, gonna have four four wide receivers, excuse me, three wide receivers and a tight end. So 11 personnel for Lafayette. They decided to throw the ball there on first down. Actually gave him three yards for the progress to a 20. Your eyes on Zadok Scott, he is a mismatch. The guy that can take the ball vertically, can break a tackle, can run away from people. He got a great 91-yard catch and run for a touchdown. Here's a good run by Lafayette as they'll get the ball to a first down. The quarterback. Carrying the football and keeping it is Keegan Shoemaker. Shoemaker will take it up to the 28. Gain of eight. You know, coming into this game, you'd think in the Lehigh defensive room, the number one thing that really bothered them was the ability of Shoemaker to run the football. And you see where you can get bodies 
to the second level on Wetzel and Hafner, you know, it's really tough for smaller linebackers to get off of blocks against big, big linemen. So the downhill running there kind of swallowed up the two Lehigh linebackers. There you see what the offense have been able to do, yards per play. In the backfield now is John Gay, but back to throw. Shoemaker a step up, and he take, takes a pretty good lick. A face mask. Here comes a penalty flag down. That looked like a face mask to me. He was hit by uh, Eric Slater. We'll get another look at it, I think. I know there's a flag down first. And was there a face mask? And That's what it looked like to me as Keegan stepped up in the pocket. You get the call here. You got it. Good call. His head kind of got spun around there. That's a big, big play there for Lafayette's offense to not only keep the drive alive, but to flip the field position. And that's a big one. That's a 15-yard penalty. Third against Lehigh for 30 yards. It's been a very clean football game. <laughs> Haven't seen a lot of chippiness at all. Here you'll get a look at it. And yeah, it looked like it was on, am I right, the number there, 99? 99 is Jason Dooling. Yeah, it looked like Jason yeah. just reached out and grabbed the face mask there. Got a good piece of it, too. <laughs> it's a big penalty for Lafayette. All the way up to the 43-yard line. First and 10. And the ball off. Looking for a little bit of running room. Not much there. As carrying the football is uh, Jaden Sutton. Up, oh, check that. It's Selwyn Simpson. <laughs> Another penalty, there's another penalty flag, and that might be on Lafayette. That was a late flag by the uh, referee. And I think it is against Lafayette. Oh, Selwyn, yeah. I think, may have committed a uh, unsportsmanlike. Well, it, it was a lot of pushing and shoving there. His momentum was stopped. And I then just, just said we've had a clean ball frustration. game. We get a face mask in here, I think, Selwyn Simpson, in his desperation, threw the football at the Lehigh tackler. He threw the ball, I believe, at Pete Hafner, the inside linebacker. Here's the call. Yep, that's going to be against Selwyn. Oh, yeah, this can't happen. You just can't do that. You got to have poise. You got to have control. Right here, you see it. Right there, he's trying to grab at the ball, Hafner, and then he threw, him, threw the ball at him. Can't do that stuff. That's that's a. Uh, that's a good call by the referee, but at the same time, you got a lot of pushing and shoving. You know, the referees have to understand how how much these kids want this football here, game. Huh? But uh, you know, you're grabbing at the football underneath, and Selwyn's got to put that behind him now. Off he had faced with a bundle. Bundle was right. It's going to be uh, second and 25 yards to go. That's his that's his first unsportsmanlike. You get two, you're tossed. Second and 25, they say, up on the board. I won't disagree with that. What, third down? We're saying no. third down. Is that how, how can that be? Is that loss of down? Well, it came after the whistle. Watch your back. Running, running. Shoemaker still on his feet. Picks up a pretty nice chunk of yardage. He'll get up to the 38-yard line. So he'll pick up 10. I only had it at second down. I'm not quite sure why that was a third down play. It should be third down right now. Good pick up inside right there. If 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 Selwyn Simpson got an unsportsmanlike for the spike after the touchdown, it shouldn't be fourth and a, down. And a uh, unsportsmanlike here, he's out. He's done. It, it should be third down, not fourth down. Because the the Lafayette picked up the first down on the penalty. And then it is third. I know they have fourth over there. No, they're saying it's fourth down on the field. Well, that that's not correct. It's third down. The scoreboard has third down. It should be third down. Now they're calling a delay a game against Lafayette. They're saying it's fourth down, and it's not true. They took the play away. It is not fourth down. It's third down. <laughs> It is third down. And it's going to be third and 20, but it cost them five yards on the delay of game. And they're going to have to punt the football here because the referees are insisting they're, they're, they're it's fourth saying down. It's fourth down. That, it's, that's not correct. It's got to get this off. They only have six seconds, four seconds now to get the playoff. They do get it off. And it's a returnable punt. It'll come down at the 30-yard line. 
And a good good punt coverage that time by Lafayette. Got a flag down in the middle of the field. There might have been some extracurricular there. And I by think a this Lehigh is against player. Lehigh. Lafayette players are celebrating a little bit. Well, I think Lafayette got. I think we're going to call a timeout. We'll wait for the call, and then uh, no, there's no call. So the ball will be placed at the 38. We'll be back. So Lafayette will get the ball on the 38-yard line with 11:58 on the clock. 38-yard line, 11:58 on the clock. And now they have to figure out how much yardage they need for a first down. It should be somewhere around, like you said, third and 18. Now they're moving the markers back, so that does not look correct to me. But we'll take that. That would be third and 10. Third and 10, a little easier than third and 18. And maybe they're right and I'm wrong. <laughs> the scoreboard, they have third and 38. <laughs> That's a little wishful thinking, but I think it's third and 18. Third and 20 now they have up there. Oh, I'm sorry, third and 20. Well, they're trying to get the crowd excited. Coach Garrett is trying to pump up his side because this is a huge play. If Lafayette can figure out a way to hang on to the football, third and 15 from the 38. Back to throw. Look in the throw. Now look in the run out of trouble. It is Shoemaker, and he's going to get run out of bounds. So uh, he'll pick up about five yards, maybe four. But with uh, where are they going to mark? Working at the 40, it looks like. Like they will mark them at that's oh, just 40. Two, yeah, two yards. So all that a non in, 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 insignificant to me play. But uh, if yet the kind of an odd personnel they had on the field. Jalen Floyd back to receive uh, the kick. Remember the ball was placed at the 38 yard line on the last punt. Let's see if Lafayette gains some yardage here on this punt. Good one. High and it is fair. They're going to gain 10 yards. The ball will be placed at the 28 yard line. That's a 32 yard punt. Let's take a look at Lehigh's turnovers. Uh, and Lafayette, I'm sure, hoping for one more. Yeah, and, and Lafayette, there's a, a big one there early in the game by YT, and he picks it off. And uh, Levis, again, that's one that they turned right back over to the Mountain Hawks. This started off the second half as Levis and Billy Schaefer make a big play, and then you see Thomas again jarring the bar loose on a kickoff return. The Lafayette, again, I told you they have to create points off of turnovers. They've only got seven off of three turnovers today. Nathan Hill is the running back. He's got the football, and he does turn the corner. Hill stays on his feet with a good long run, and he'll get the ball close to midfield. He is going to be stopped by Yazir Thomas along with Major Jordan, and they will mark, mark the ball at the 50-yard line, so a 22-yard run. And Lafayette just not getting off of blocks at the top of the screen. Watch this. They're going to get to the edge, seal the edge as well, and I think that was uh, Keith Earl. Just you got to keep working sideways, keep your shoulders square, and unlike Lafayette getting to the edge, Hill did a good job just stringing that out. But this Lafayette offensive or defensive line's got to get off blocks. 14th Lehigh first down, right from midfield, first and 10. Here comes Hill again. This time, things are bunched up, and he manages to put his foot in the ground and burst forward as uh, the tackle was made by, once again, Major Jordan. Also in there, Caleb Burr. And they'll put it at the 45, a gain of five. Lehigh yeah, doing a good job, just putting a body on a body and then allowing Hill and Allen to kind of feel their way through there. And Lehigh, again, they run the ball very successfully here in this game, something that Lafayette fans out there probably thought they could not do. 10 5 to go in regulation. Back to throw, it's Beesmer. Beesmer looking, stepping up in the pocket. Still looking downfield, firing downfield, he's got a man. That ball is caught down to the 15-yard line. That, the, the catch is made by Jack Sutton. Tackle on the play by Deron Gilbert, but not before getting to the 15-yard line. Make it the 14-yard line. A 31-yard pitch and catch. Well, again, lets him out of the box here. Ryan Barnett gets up the field, and there's no pursuit. Lafayette has had a spy a bunch of times, but just not closing the distance quick enough. Olivas well, there got there, but great move by the receiver to come back. A freshman making a big play, Jack Sutton. Lehigh threatening to take the lead. They're down by four. The ball on the 14-yard line, first and 10. Hand the ball off, carrying it is Rashawn Allen. 
And Allen is going to get popped at around the 11 yard line. Again, it's Major Jordan in on the tackle. A gain of three, second and seven. And you kind of get the feel like this Lafayette defense is kind of wearing down a little bit. Picking up, you know, plays in chunks now and allowing Beesmer to scramble and make and extend plays like he did on that last one. Lafayette needs a big stop. Third, make it second down and seven to go from the 11-yard line. Malik Hill back in the game right now for, for uh, Malik Hamm back in the game for Lafayette. And we get movement along the line of scrimmage. This will be a five-yard penalty. And one of the assistant coaches running out on the field doing some screaming at somebody. That was against Alex Snyder, the tight end, the sophomore tight end. Beesmer kind of got right in his face and Beesmer took a hit too on that long throw by Levis. Came up a little bit, kind of winding up his throwing shoulder. Fourth penalty for 35 yards, puts the ball back at the 16. Second and a dozen. Where Lafayette, I think, has to bring the pressure. Got to bring the heat, trust your man-to-man -man coverage. You're playing a lot of zone. Beesmer firing into the corner. It's going to be an incomplete pass. Good defense that time by Lafayette's Romeo Weichel. The pass was intended for Alex Snyder. And Snyder at 6'5", 240. Weichel stayed right with him and got up in the air. And this ball fluttered. Look at it coming out of his hand. Just fluttered enough. Not sure if he even would have had a chance to come down inbounds. The Lehigh fans wanted interference. Looked like he might have wrapped his arm a little bit. No call. And, and this is where, you know, Lehigh, again, they probably have one more possession in this ball game, maybe two, but they've run the ball in these situations. Lafayette's got to be aware of any type of a gut draw or something back up the middle. A field goal does not get them to 14. Back to throw, looking, Beesmer getting pressure, fires, and he, as he's getting hit, he tried to drop the ball off. It's going to be fourth down. To, uh, to Rashawn Allen, and he just could not quite get it to him. They're going to go for it. Pressure like. came from Marco Olivas. Who else? Yeah, Marco did a better job there on the spy. Watch Marco. He's in the middle just spying. But now he closes ground prior to him releasing and getting out of the pocket. So you see Olivas vertically coming forward. A better job by him making the adjustment. So this is going to be a 33-yard field goal attempt. Henning is one for one so far today, trying to draw Lehigh to within one. That's the fake, too, if you're Lafayette. It's down, the kick is up, certainly long enough, then it looks good enough, it is good. It's 14-13 with eight minutes and 11 seconds on the clock. That is good for a 33-yard field goal, the second field goal of the ball game for Henning. Henning's been very good this year. Really. Well, he now is 13-4-17. Yeah, very good, doing a nice job, both him and Gordon Brock, two of the better kickers in this league. Along with Andrew Mevis, they uh, nice job by Henning, and you get the feeling if Henning gets another chance, he's going to maybe get a chance to win this ball game. And this is a huge offensive possession for Lafayette. They have yet to drive. answer. Seven plays, 56 yards and seven plays, yeah. but the defense came up big yep. when they had to. Now the offense needs to come up big. Yeah, got to make a play here offensively. They've really turned two turnovers into points and haven't had a drive really over 50 yards. All right, we've got some final scores for you. Georgetown loses to Holy Cross 24 nothing. Holy Cross is your Patriot League champion by themselves. Looked like we could have it all bunched up, and it turned out they just took care of business today. And Bucknell still in the third period, 14 to 10. They could end uh, their season with just a couple of losses, uh, and that's a good season for them. They were picked to finish last. Well, yeah, absolutely. Year. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of scrambled <laughs> all up to uh, this year. You got to feel good for Holy Cross. I mean, obviously, Chesney, a new coach in there, done a good job just in his second year coming around, bringing that team around. And they've got some terrific freshmen, some terrific athletes. Dena Hart's done a nice job. And, and, and their big player, Dominic Crozier, kind of carried them the second half of the season. They had a tough schedule early in the yes, year. Yes, they did, for sure. And while we have some time here, uh, certainly a big thank you to the Lafayette Athletic Department, the Communications Department, headed up by Scott Morse. Uh, our crew headed up by Rick Deho. Uh, they've done a terrific job all year with these Lafayette football games. And uh, another good job today. Their job not quite finished, but I'm sure they're happy. It's a pleasant day uh, to watch Lafayette Lehigh. We've had some very cold, wintry days during this series. Uh, and thanks to all of you, the fans who have watched us, not just 
on the Lafayette Sports Network, not just on RCN4, not just on WBPH Channel 60. Today we're on Masson and obviously on uh, GoLeopards.com, the Patriot Net Network. We're all over the world. So uh, we thank you for spending time with us. Uh, we have thoroughly enjoyed uh, coming into your living room to call the ball game. All right, Lafayette, this ball is going to go out of bounds. That is a big mistake, Michael. That, that is a mistake right there. As you know, Lafayette not making good decisions, returning kickoffs, and this one just kind of came off the side of the foot of the kicker there, and that, that just can't happen. Boy, on kickoffs, their field position hasn't even gotten back to the 20-yard line. But on this kickoff, the ball is going to come out to the 35-yard line. And that's a freshman, Dylan Van Dusen, 6'4", 185 freshman. He's had 56 kickoffs this year, so he is their kickoff guy. But that is a good field position for Lafayette. And the most important down here, it's almost like overtime. The most important down here for Lafayette is first down. No Selwyn Simpson back there. He has been expelled from this game for a couple of unsportsmanlike penalties against him. Back to throw the ball. Shoemaker looking. Now he'll step up. He's not going anywhere. He gets wrapped up defensively as the tackle will be made by Michael Lawrencell. He's been busy. 6'4", 255-pound sophomore. And a loss of a yard. He could just hold on to the ball. He had time to deliver this good coverage down the field. But you got to try to find a check down right here. Good coverage down the field right there. But it looks like... You know, somebody was on the check down. You got to find your check down there. Lafayette going with a seven man protection, three receivers out, and they were all deep routes. Lafayette's longest drive was their first one here in the second half, a seven play drive that got them a touchdown. Otherwise, they've had a couple of one, two, three and outs and one five play drive. And again, Shoemaker will not get much as he's tackled by Riley O'Neill, the outside linebacker. Got some help from Keith Wetzel again in there. And that will get up to the 37, a gain of three. And you see the Lehigh sideline getting pumped up. They know how big this third down is going to be. Lafayette has struggled here in the second half. Lehigh seniors have never lost to Lafayette. The Lafayette seniors have never beaten. Lehigh, Lafayette looking at a four-game losing streak coming in. Their last win at Yankee Stadium five years ago. Your eye on Zadok Scott. Zadok and going down. Here comes the pressure again, and it's Wetzel. Keith Wetzel in there, and he has reason to show his muscle because he's shown it all day long. What a game he has had. And three sacks now, two and a half sacks, the interception in the red zone. But Lafayette just has not picked him up all day long again. That's Jaden Sutton in there. He's got to do a better job cutting him or getting a body on a body. And Jaden Sutton twice now has whiffed on those blitzes by Wetzel. So Lafayette will punt it away again. This is their seventh punt of the game. Good high punt, not a long one. And it takes a Lehigh bounce and will be downed at the 50-yard line. Ends up being a 20-yard punt. Not what you needed there if you're Lafayette. And, and it just, you know, those things come back to haunt you. You can't punt the football very well. You know, he's had a couple of good punts today, Gordon Brock. But Lehigh, if you look at him right now, they're, they're about 25 yards away from a, a game-winning field goal by Henning. With 5.57 on the clock. Falls back on the Lafayette defense. It's been field position these last couple weeks for Lafayette. Lafayette with four turnovers. They certainly... Looking maybe for a fifth here to get the ball out of Lehigh's hands. Lafayette turned it over just once on a pass interception. First and ten from midfield. And the ball off. It's Allen. Allen not going anywhere. This time he doesn't get the edge. Tackle made by Yazir Thomas. The strong safety comes up to make the hit. There's a loss of two. Yeah, good read by Yazir coming up. They've gotten the edge a couple times today, but that time you see Thomas had the contain, came up, got low on the running back. Second and 12. I'm calling defensive plays here. This is where I'm bringing the pressure. I know it's going to be pass, so I'm trying to get an extra rusher to the quarterback and create a sack. I'll be rushing three at the moment. Linebacker showing no indication they're blitzing. They are not. Back to throw. Beesmer is going deep downfield. He has a man. And it's going to be caught. Catches by Devin Bibbins. Bibbins has it at the 10-yard line. 
Nick at the 11 yard line. A nice catch by Bibbins. He goes high. Six foot, 190 pound senior leading receiver this season. Yeah, and that was one on one coverage on the backside by Caleb Bird. He got flat footed. Caleb was waiting for the stop route and he got the takeoff. And Bibbins went up and took the ball away from him. Not very good coverage there by Caleb Burr. Lehigh now in field goal position, which gives them the lead. They're in touchdown position, first and 10 from the 11. And the ball off. They do give it to Rashawn Allen, and Allen will be buried at around the nine yard line. He'll pick up a couple of yards. It's got to look at using, possibly using their timeouts here because they need time on the clock to get their offense back on the field. You, know, you got to play field position and Lafayette has not done that in this game. Remember they had to use a timeout to avoid a delay of game penalty so they only have two left. Allen in there on a second and eight. Ball at the nine. Lafayette might bring bringing pressure zone again. Beesmer steps up, steps up, has some running room. He'll go down at the five. It looked like Alevis was there to make that tackle. A gain of four. They can get a first down at the one. Yeah, he's going to use the timeout here. That's what Bibbins has done today. That, that's kind of a quiet day for Bibbins. He yeah. came in with big numbers, 63 catches, as he now obviously has 67. 769 yards coming in and six touchdowns. Here's John Leone. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Michael. Hey, one of the things we probably haven't mentioned are all of the telecast parties all over the country. Uh, dozens and dozens of them. One of them come from Dallas. And of course, freshman quarterback Keegan Shoemaker, that's his hometown. His sister and her friends are watching. Hi to my buddy Jeff Margulies, class of 74 down there. Uh, Brad Dyer's hometown. A whole bunch of folks uh, down in Dallas uh, watching the game. Back to you guys. Well, there you get proof. John's not lying as he's got uh, a picture to prove it. We say hello to all of you. And I know right now uh, you're on the edge of that recliner. <laughs> you should be. Because uh, Lehigh right now in a position to take the lead here no matter what. Lafayette, they charge that timeout to Lafayette, Barry. Uh, from the five yard line. You've got to see pressure here from Lafayette, see if they can get to the quarterback. They hand the ball off, and a tackle is missed. That tackle is not, however. So Keith Earl got in there first to make the initial hit. He wasn't able to bring the running back down. Lafayette with one timeout left is going to save it. Marco Olivas came in, I think, to, to end the play. No gain. And here comes the go-ahead field goal. Good job by Earl getting off a block. And then Olivas, who's been the defensive player of the game, 22 yard field goal here from Austin Henning. Lafayette's blocked a couple of these this year. He has made a 20 yarder and a 33 yarder for the lead for the first time today. It's down. It's up. And it is good. Lehigh 16. Lafayette 14. The Leopards will have 303 to work with. And all they need is a field goal. You said it, Gary. They had just the one timeout left. They've done this before. They did it against Fordham. They moved the ball. But the question mark here for Lafayette is they, they haven't shown much spark here in the second half offensively. They don't have a lot of rushing yards. They've struggled throwing the football. They've struggled protecting their quarterback. And they need a good kickoff return here. And they need a good decision by J.J. Younger and Jaden Sutton. Lafayette with 175 total yards to Lehigh's 352. So the game you, know, you would think would not be quite as close as it is based on those numbers. Lafayette has rushed for just 81 yards. They have thrown for 94 yards. And they're going to get the football in a uh, last that ditch effort. That's getting ready to kick the ball off is Dylan Van Dusen, the 6'4", 185-pound freshman. The last one out of bounds. We'll see what he does here. It's going to be a short one. And it's going to come down to J.J. Younger. 
And a nice run back. That's not young. I think he gave the ball off to Sutton or let Sutton take it. And now there's some mugging and roughing up and uh, Lafayette will have decent field position. Looks like the 39 yard line is where they will start this drive. Beats well, just pointing out to me here just 59 total yards of offense for Lafayette in the second half. Well right now they're going to need about 59 yards. <laughs> So where do you have to get for Cordenbrock? His longest field goal is 44 yards. So to get to the 34 yard line, they need at least 27 yards on this drive. John Gay is in the backfield. No Selwyn Simpson available. First and 10. Lafayette has struggled moving the ball. Well, they're under three minutes. Blitz from the weak side corner. This time it's picked up. And Keegan cannot find a white shirt. So he'll run it. He'll get good yardage. He'll get knocked out of bounds. He has a first down as he gets the midfield, a gain of 11. Uh, Tackle can, was made on the play by Pete Hafner. You kind of think that Lehigh would have a spy on him, and he's just taking a long time in the pocket. Great protection. Nobody's getting to him here, but he's got to make that decision a little bit earlier, and you wonder if the legs of Keegan Shoemaker, we've seen it all year long, can make a difference here at the end. Some separation, maybe Jordan Hall. First and ten from the 50. Keegan back, looking, firing, little out pattern, drops it into the belly. That'll be a good catch. Tackle is made by Riley O'Neill. The catch is made by Jordan Hull, and Hall will get to the. Well, they're not going to give him that forward progress. They're going to mark it at the 45. A gain of just five. He caught the ball around the 42-yard line. They got drugged back. Good catch there. That catch low. It was uh, by Zadok Scott, and he's going to be a yard shy of a first down. He'll pick up four. It's going to bring up third down and one. And that ball was way. Now he did catch that. Yep, that ball was way down. They can look at it. Again yeah, I think they're top, and I think that's what they're going to do. And it'll be interesting to see if they give him give him the catch. The good news is it gives Lafayette a chance to talk things over here. Yes. Exactly what they want to do. You said it, Gary. Perfect. Yep. So we'll wait again for the guys upstairs. They're actually in a booth right next to us, but we are walled off from them. First time we've been inside to do Lafayette Lehigh. They used to stick us. Maybe we can get a <laughs> shot of where we used to be. They used to stick us I out know. on a parapet uh, with a grate underneath us, and the wind would come up through that grate the entire game. Uh, well, that's where we are no. now. I want you to. I want to get a look at where we used to be. This is comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and uh, over there, uh, we would be outside. We never had a day like this where the temperature <laughs> was nice and pleasant. Uh, but uh, we do appreciate the new account. To see those guys standing there where the white bars are. Well, yes. that's where we were, and right we'd here. have to tape all our information to those bars. No, we're in the top one. We're in the. Yeah. yeah. The crew, of course, stands outside. But they don't have the draft. We had the draft. And they're used to it. And the open grate just created a lovely, a lovely yeah. situation. It was good for your papers, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, to keep everything. You yeah. brought about six rolls of tape with you. John beat Bowman looked like a gorilla. He had so many clothes on, and he doing our spotting, but he couldn't move yeah. his arms. Right. We do appreciate it. It's third down. Yeah. They do give him the catch. It's third down and one. And you know, Ken Lafayette. They do have a timeout here, so. Can they afford to maybe pop a draw in here to run this football? Yeah, look at Zadok. He's going to go down, take it off the turf, and then bring it in. Good catch there by him. And it, it brings up a third down and one in lieu of a third down and seven. So, uh, so they, have, catch. they actually have to get the ball to the 27 for that guy there to have any chance of winning this football game. You're keeping a lot of guys in the block as well. Seven man protection. Well, they're going to get out. the first down. That's for sure. Now get out of bounds. And will the officials stop the clock? They will. Sutton. As Sutton makes the catch set a swing pattern out of the backfield. Tackle was made by Riley O'Neill at the 35 yard line. That's a gain of six and a very important first down. Yeah, and I think if you're Lafayette right here, I think you continue to throw the football. I don't want to run the football, take a TFL. And then have to use my timeout. I think you throw it. Keegan's got to be aware right can't now. Take a sack. Can't take a sack. Can't take a sack. If it's not there, it's first down. So you can throw the ball away. You can throw the ball short. 
You can throw the ball not into traffic, but this Lehigh defense has been very opportunistic, and here comes the blitz again. They're coming, they're firing, that's going to be a completion. And staying on his feet, getting out of bounds. Good catch by Zadok Scott. And they are down now to the 20 yard line, a gain of 15. They now should be in field goal territory. And of course, you don't want to give Lehigh any opportunity to get the ball back. So the Leopards will try to take as much of that 108 off the clock as they can. They would love to put it into the end zone, but they certainly don't want to take any chances either. No, absolutely. I mean, right now, you know, you can run the football here. You're in Jeff Gordon Brock field goal range. But uh, you don't want any negative plays if you're Lafayette. Gordon Brock is 10 for 13 on the season, carrying the ball and trying to get it in the middle of the field is Jaden Sutton. Lehigh calls a timeout. Sutton just got back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Well, you see what he did as well. He, they're actually going to give him a loss. Loss of a yard, yeah. yeah. So you, now you've got to go to Corden Brock and you've got to say, which hash do you want the ball on? Do you want it in the middle? Do you want it on the right? Do you want it on the left? You know, you look at Jeff Corden Brock. He's a kid that uh, kicks well on grass. Mm -hmm. He loved it up in uh, Worcester, obviously. He's been perfect up there, four for four in his career, the player of the week. Uh, get a look, maybe we can get a look at Jeff warming up down there around the Lafayette 30-yard line. But uh, it might come down here to a kick. Lafayette's got to protect the football league. You have one timeout left. I don't think uh, you were never a kicker. I was never a kicker. I, I, I wonder what goes through their mind. I mean, they know that the yeah. ball game's going to be placed sure. on their foot. And Jeff's a smart kid. He, he knows yeah. that this game can come down to him or Henning. Uh, you know, Lafayette right here, if they can pop a play, get something, John Gay's in the game right now, running back. If they could maybe get one more five-yard gain, he almost turned this into an extra point for Jeff. Second and 11. Back to throw. No, he's not going to throw. He's going to run the ball and get good yardage. He'll pick up about five yards up to the 16-yard line. And now Lehigh calls a timeout again. Well, they're trying to save as much time as they can, similar to what Lafayette was doing on their side. Lafayette's still with a timeout. So you wonder if Lehigh will call a third one here. It's going to be third down and five. And right now we're looking at somewhere around a 32-yard field goal from the right hash. So this play, again, has to take into consideration where your kicker wants the football. Does he want it on the right hash? Does he want it in the middle? Or does he want it on the left? And Really, that's all it comes down to. That's what will determine, I guess, this particular call right here. So they're talking things over. Gordon Brock is still down below here with the ball in his hand, and teeing it up and kicking it into the net. A lot of nervous people right now here at uh, Goodman Stadium. One thing you got to take into consideration here is uh, I know you don't want to take a shot, but a first down basically takes it down to your kick or nothing. And nothing else, yeah. If you don't get the first down here, it, it, Lehigh calls another timeout, and they will have about 50, 50 seconds, 51 seconds. Leopards have driven from their own 39-yard line down to the Lehigh 16-yard line. Hand the ball off. And it's cutting up inside. And He's got I don't it. know. It looks like he got it. Well, I don't know. He just took a half a step backwards. It's going to be a measurement. Boy, that is awfully close. Timeout call with 53 seconds on the clock. I don't think he got it. Wow, that's going to be really, really close. I think he needed to get across the 11-yard line, but it's going to be close. And then the decision falls back on Coach John Garrett. There won't be a measurement. He did not get it, but Lehigh calls their final timeout. Did he get a good spot here? He did. That's a good yep. spot. Yep, right at the 11-yard line. If you're John John Garrett here, do you, do you, you can put the game away by getting the first down. And then it's basically an extra point for Corden Brock. So do you kick it right here or? It's fourth down. I know that. I know that. But you have a timeout left, and you need basically a half you, a yard. I know you spend a little bit of time at Wind Creek, the uh, casino. Easy. You're a gambling man. Easy. But do you gamble on a fourth and one down no. by two points? Or do you want to make that case? You, you know, doing a lot of lawyering here today. Here we go. My wife's a lawyer. <laughs> the ball is going to be a 28-yard field goal, essentially, to win the game for the Lafayette Leopards. You've got a better view than most. Mike refuses to watch. It's down. It's up. It's good. That ball is good for Corden Brock. 17 to 
16 lead. Gordon Brock with a 28-yard field goal. And they lined it up. They ran the ball with John Gay to the left, got it more in the middle of the field. And again, you go back to the place that set it up, the scrambling ability of the quarterback. Good snap, good hold. Oh, look that in there. It looked like my nine iron. A little draw. It looked better from the other angle. Show that. <laughs> Rick, show the other angle. A little draw coming in. Good hold there by Sean O'Malley, the backup quarterback. Now, it's 47 seconds. Yeah, no and we need outs. a good kickoff. Certainly, we don't want a big return by Lehigh. And again, you look at Austin Henning. He this year has a 45 yard field goal as his longest, a 20 yarder, 33 yarder, and 22 yarder today. And then you need a good kickoff here by Court Brock. The wind is, a, if anything, a little bit in his face. They have no timeouts left, Lehigh. And Mike, do you kick it long? Well, I think you kick it like you've been kicking it. Last time they kicked it long and short, I would kind of angle it into the corner and, and kind of pin them inside. And you want to try to keep them inside the 30-yard line on this kickoff return. It's end kick. over end. It is high. It will come down at the 10-yard line to Jalen Floyd. Floyd, look. Oh, he's going to get crushed. Coming up to make the stick is Jack Lamb. The senior, 6'1", 220 from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Jack Lamb with the hit. Uh, beautiful play by Jack. He's the one that recovered the fumble on one of the earlier kickoffs. This, uh, this half, big time plays by him. Linebackers are playing big in this game. Watch him come out of nowhere right there and just wrap him up. No timeouts for Lehigh. If you're Lafayette, you don't want to allow Anybody to get to the sideline and certainly nobody behind you. They let Bibbins get behind them last time. See if they can put the pass rush. This is where Lafayette's been very good getting to the quarterback. Beesmer back, steps up, runs around, using valuable time. He'll run out of bounds. No one to throw to, and as you look downfield, nobody was open. Ryan Barnett chases him out of bounds. And Lafayette again going with that three-man rush, and they're allowing Marco Olivas to spy. And that's what you want. You want your quickest linebacker to just kind of mirror the quarterback. And if Marco can close the space here. Loss of a yard, that doesn't matter much. It brings up second, and they need about 50 or 60 yards. You made a good point. No quarter real in the game all day long. It's been Bibbins. Back to throw, looking, still looking for a shirt, and throwing the ball, no. As that's going to be a good catch with 25 seconds. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. We're going to have to spike it. Ball to the 42-yard line. Let's see if that's what they do here. They do not. They keep it alive. And Beesmer running, running. Keith Earl chasing. And it's going to be a good catch at the sideline. Another good catch by Dan Ball. Boston Dan Ball. Clock stops with 14 seconds to go. Yeah, but we can had an opportunity there to make a play. He just couldn't get Beesmer in his grasp. 14 seconds left, and you kind of get the feeling like they need probably another 15 to 20 yards. They have to get to at least about the 28-yard line. Unless he even has a stronger leg than he's uh, needed to show this year. 45 yards is longest. Now going down, throwing the ball. It's going to be a catch. No, it's going to be an incomplete pass. Grabbing the shirt was Malik Ham as he had Beesmer in his grasp. Give Beesmer credit for throwing that ball and stopping the clock. Yeah, now the question to watch the left side of your screen here, the bull rush and the stretch there by the right arm of Malik Ham to pull him down. If that's a sack, game's over. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, absolutely. They get one more opportunity with eight seconds on the clock. The question is, can't they don't have time to line up? for, a, for a, a, an extra point, so you've got to guard the sidelines here. You can't allow them a 20-yard gain to the sideline. Very important. Beesmer back. He's looking. He's getting chased. He's out of the pocket. He's looking downfield. The clock will run out. It is all over. Lafayette will win this football game. The four-game losing streak has come to an end. You watch them celebrate, no words are necessary.
they're going to put a second back on the clock. I don't know. They have not let the, flip, the players leave the field. John Garrett is extremely upset. There's more than enough. That play took more than eight seconds to run. Now they just put a second back on the clock. They just... My goodness. We have had some strange turn of events in this ball game. We don't need another one. And all Lafayette has to do right now is knock the football down. You got to line up everybody deep. Don't allow anybody behind you. I should remind you the and post game show hero. is coming up, presented by the Maroon Club. John Leone is ready for that. John and Phil. Well, I think they're going to look at it to see if clock the time did run out. John Garrett, extremely upset. And they are going to review this. To check on the clock. That play took. How in my opinion, eight seconds. How appropriate would it be that this game now ends in a real subtle, slow, <laughs> I mean, kind of anticlimactic? Yeah, I guess. Well, they're looking at it right now, and I think that clock ran out. I mean, that that was a scramble to the left. Malik Cam again almost had Beesmer in his grasp, and then the throw was a lob over the top, trying to get the ball to Hill, I believe, um, and it just fell incomplete. So we'll wait and see what the call is from up above. Now, Coach Garrett still adamant about uh, taking that second off the clock. And we can do nothing more than uh, than wait for the decision. We've got a lot of waiting. That guy, that guy right there, referee Jeff Gray, has spent a lot of time just uh, listening to the people upstairs. second back on the clock here it's going to have to be a Hail Mary they can't obviously line up and, and uh, kick a field goal from here so uh, we're all waiting for the end of it like you said Gary we had that lull in the middle of the game where they put the ball back for Lafayette on a third down and now an opportunity for Lafayette to knock the ball down and take a huge win back to Easton Looking at it right now on the big screen as well. I watched the clock go to zero. It was it was really close as to whether he had gotten out of bounds or not. There you see what the fans are looking at. One second back on the clock. They are going to do that. So this one not quite over yet. And we'll see if Lafayette can get a little bit of pass rush. They're rushing only three guys up front. And they got the spy right there, Marco Olivas. I think Marco's got to attack the quarterback. After they establish the run, Lafayette's going to use their final timeout. Coach Garrett will bring everybody over. They'll talk things over defensively. One rule, you just can't let anybody behind you keep the play in front of you and make sure you tackle before they get into the uh, end zone. And, and no pass interference, too. You can't have a pass interference call as well, which would line up Lehigh for a final play. So we've got to be aware, you know, you got to tackle in the open field, a hitch and pitch, a hook and ladder, something like that as well. You know, the question is, can Beesmer throw it? He's going to have to throw it from the 50-yard line, 50 yards. We, of course, will have our, uh, our MVP uh, chosen by uh, the Lafayette Sports Department. And conversation between Phil and and John, but we have to end this game. This is the play. He's the roll right. He's looking. He's looking. He's going down. And they will sack the quarterback. And now Lafayette has stopped the streak. Keith Earl no, don't do that. was there to get there. And let's watch the celebration again. Yeah, the pass rush. You give Malik Cam another opportunity to get there. What a celebration by the Lafayette community. Well, we said coming in that it would be which offense played the best. Look at Malik Cam. He's just overpowered. Olivas is there. And Olivas as well. He did a good job attacking right there. Celebration for Lafayette. It's been a long time in the waiting. Both defenses good. Played really well. 
Lafayette drove the ball, Mike, when they had to from their own 30, 39 yard line. They took it down for the field goal.